orange. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Ricard Shiar of the Gathering of Christ Church, and yes, we're going to Zion. <clears throat> we have a Sabbath lessons for you all today, and I thank you for your presence. Uh, as you come in for this Sabbath, please hit the like button. That way, brothers and sisters throughout the earth will know that we are currently streaming, bringing forth the word of the Most High to encourage God's people throughout the four corners of the earth okay so as you come in please hit the like button that way more traffic will be driven here on this sabbath morning now noon it depends on where you are to receive the word to edify and to encourage our people uh, in these trying times okay now 
before I go into the lesson, I first of all would like to give all praises to the Most High, Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, what we walk. Okay, Elder Loya is relaxing this Sabbath, so I have Brother Shapat. You all know him from the Hebrew and Bible Academy and all everywhere we go, Shapat is with us. And uh, he brings great news like tomorrow. I have no idea what he's going to jump into, but, you know, you know, it's it's interesting. <laughs> but he'll be assisting me on, on the reading side and, and, and on the precept side this morning. All right. <clears throat> and uh, the topic of our discussion today, and it's going to get deep up in here, is uh, wickedness resides in our homes. You're not living in, in, in your home with, with just your family members. We're not. We're living in our home with other spirits. <laughs> okay. Wickedness resides in our homes, and, and we have to understand how to overcome the wickedness and the evil through righteous warfare, spiritual warfare. Okay. I don't think any of you out there um, would want to uh, miss this particular lesson. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> right? Wickedness resides in our homes. The hard truth. Spiritual warfare. Man. Hey, let's go in. Uh, first of all, let's do the Hebrew credo, and then we'll jump right in. We, d we, we go into this every Sabbath. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah, Ahaya, Alahaya Nawa, Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah, Ahaya, Alahaya Nawa, Ahaya Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. All right, all right. <clears throat> Don't forget, as you come in, hit the like button. Uh, our topic and discussion today, as you all know, wickedness resides in our homes. Now, the hard truth. But the problem is, is that the world is in a state of confusion and have no idea of spiritual warfare. And the examples I can give you is uh, we're, we're getting inundated with mothers crying out, sending, sending messages, calling us. I'm speaking of uh, grandmothers, 70, I spoke to one just the other day, crying out concerning their children. What's going on? I try to pray for them. Can, can you pray with me for them? Hmm. And, and the mothers, they're not, they don't want to accept, and it's a hard thing to accept, is that the children don't want prayer. They want what they're doing. And that's just on one level. That's just on one level. On every level, there's a battle where, wicked, where wickedness expresses itself within our own homes. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of those who are looking to do right. Either it's the children, the parents, right? Hey, you, you probably have to watch the dog too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, wickedness resides and I'm going to show you today, I went into it, how to recognize it, where it comes from, who, who controls the wickedness, so that we can escape from this prison, this paradigm that, that aimed, that, that's really aimed towards destroying us and having our souls go into darkness and, uh, and utter torment. Okay? Now... I know we have some new people here today. And I'm, I'm going to go into some things that y'all probably have no idea. 
Okay, and, and through this, we'll begin to have what you would call a cleansing. Okay, a house cleansing where we're starting to move stuff out that don't belong in our home. Right? Uh, usually during the time of the spring, because winter, things is all packed up and stored on shelves. You don't care if there's clutter in certain places because what? You're storing for the winter. You're, 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 in, a, you're in a conclave and you're not worried about cleaning up. As soon as the sun starts coming out like this time of year, what happens? You begin to open up the sheds and open the doors and raise the shades and starting to clean out things and rearrange the house, right? Well, brothers and sisters, it's time for that spiritually, right? It's time to understand where the wicked lies and move it out, right? <laughs> Are you with me? Now, for those who have just come in or have been following this for not too long. I'm speaking of those who might be Israelites and or those who come out of the Christian church and starting to understand that we are the children of Israel according to the Bible. I need you to bear with us because we're going to be going back and forth using precepts. This is how we, this is how you get understanding, right? Let's go to Isaiah real quick, uh, Shabbat. <clears throat> Isaiah 28 and 9. <clears throat> right? Yeah, the, this, yeah. like uh, Christine Scott just mentioned, the clutter, getting rid of the clutter so you can see clearly, walk around freely. Well, there's some spiritual clutter, controlled clutter that's aimed towards destroying the righteous, <laughs> mm. right? Let's read Isaiah 28 and 9. Read it. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Whom shall the Most High God teach knowledge? The knowledge he's speaking of is the Bible. Right? Whom shall the Most High teach the knowledge of the Bible to? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And it says, second, whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, there's only one doctrine or correct doctrine in the Bible. So to see all these different denominations and different theories and teachings used in the Bible is, is absolutely asinine. The Bible teaches one doctrine. The fall and rise of man and the judgment against evil. The fall and the rise of the righteous people of Israel who will judge the evil. In a nutshell, the doctrine of the Bible, folks. That's it. That's the doctrine. That's the narrative. And if you understand that narrative, it clears everything else up. Okay. It clear up the gray areas, the spiritual clutter. Okay. Oh, love and this, that. Nah, we're not, you're not going to pander to my emotions. I'm not dealing with your love type thing right now. Okay. Because the Most High, he loves and he hates. Right? <laughs> so, so make sure when someone comes in with a doctrine, they're just talking about, well, it's all about love. Well, there's a time that the Most High will execute hatred on those who hate him. Okay? There's only one doctrine of the Bible. And the narrative of the Bible is the fall of man because man lost his dominion, Adam, through disobedience, and the rise of Adam through his children, the children of Israel. The fall of the children of Israel due to disobedience, and through Christ, they will one day rise again to judge the unrighteous, the doctrine of the Bible. That's the doctrine. 
That's your base floor there. I'm giving you the foundation. <clears throat> Read. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precepts. Precept. Originally in its ancient form, Hebrew. Precept upon precept. Now it's key that you understand the gravity, the, under, the full understanding of what the Bible is saying. The Most High is saying through this Bible, I'm going to teach you to understand my word. Each line of my word in Hebrew is a precept. Now these words in the Hebrew came from the heavenly tables, the heavens, and were made what? They were made to edify for the children of the Most High on earth. Okay? So when you talk about the stars, the constellations, the heavenly tables, well, this book was made from those, okay, into print. Precept upon precept, the word of God. Read. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Line upon line. Each line, there's a message. But what? The Bible is written in dark sentences and allegories. So that you just cannot read it. One thing, you can read it in context. One chapter to the next. That gives you one level. But then the Bible becomes manifold, folks, where he'll take a precept that talks about something in Hebrew here, and it's the same word in Hebrew someplace else, and it links to give you a higher narrative of that specific context. <laughs> See? So when the Bible was translated into English, those same precepts stayed connected. Okay? Line upon line, line upon line, read. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. See that? So that means I may start off in the book of Joshua, and there's a precept I'm reading in, the, in, in a chapter in, in Joshua that really doesn't make no sixth sense in the context of how I'm reading it because it, it jumps into something else, right? But then I pick it up in Proverbs as if it flawlessly moved from one chapter to an entirely different chapter and linked and gave understanding to what I was reading in Joshua. <laughs> See that? See, but everyone don't have the understanding of how to break down this book because the book was given to the children of God. And that's why there's so much controversy co go uh, concerning Israelites in our awakening right now, because we're able to break down the highest so-called theologians and teachers on earth, and they cannot contend against this doctrine. They cannot, because we're not trying to use the Bible to do what? T to shield our paganism. See, we're not doing that. We're just teaching the Bible. We don't have no other intent outside of teaching the Bible. We're not trying to conceal our true doctrine like the Catholic Church is, like your Sunday churches are. See, they're using the Bible, but yet behind the Bible is paganism. Behind everything they're doing is traditions of men and customs of evil. See? <laughs> See, and that's why... Everyone is contented against this awakening and all the other doctrines. They're mad, whether you be Muslim, Christian, Catholic, doesn't matter. They're all upset. They're in their feelings. Why? Because they won't let the paganism go and just read and deal with the doctrine of Bible, the doctrine of the Bible as it is written. I don't need your theories, your church's theories or your religious theories. I don't need it. The Bible deals with a doctrine within itself, okay? I don't need no Roman coming later saying, well, I'm going to give you my understanding of it. The Roman Catholics weren't the people, aren't the people of God. 
I don't need no Arab coming from some place talking about, I'm going to give you some understanding of the Bible. No. The children of Israel are Jacob. They were Jacob. Always, always has been. Not Ishmael. I don't need your understanding on our record. You are against our record. Okay? Let's make it clear. So that's why they're coming and it's talking about, yeah, it's tampered with. If it was for you, you would stand with it. See? <laughs> if it exalted you, but the Bible is doing what? It's freeing the prisoners. And it starts here. And I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, how we have become imprisoned. When you think of slavery, you only think on the layman's level. Oh, I'm picking cotton, woe is me. I'm building plantation. I'm in slave ships. Let me tell you, that's the lowest level of bondage. The bondage we're in now is way more strategic, okay? And this is the type of slavery that can last for generations. And I'm going to show you that it's on a spiritual level. And guess what? We are in prison in our own homes. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little is how we read the Bible. And I'm putting this, put, pointing this out, the, out, out here for you now because we're going to be going to different precepts. And it's upon you to write these precepts down for this topic today. Okay? Here a little and there a little. Read. Verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So the Most High was showing Isaiah that he would speak to his people in exile one day. Because it was prophesied we would go into captivity. Right? That he would speak to us in a new language. Right? You got it. English. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop something on y'all too. English is a variant of Hebrew. It's a variant of Hebrew. You can learn that in our class, folks, the Hebrew and Bible Academy. King James was a black Hebrew, folks. He renamed the, the lands of Britannica and all that of Europe. He renamed, I, I'm, before him, our people, when we came in, not him, but our people after the fall of Rome, renamed certain sectors of Rome, England, which means what? Angel's land. Angel's land. We renamed those areas and called it Angel's land. The Anglo, the, hey, brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It was the blacks ruling in England. The Roman Catholics who were, who were Romans were battling against the black rule. Until this day, that's why the Catholic Church and others don't defend King James' honor and let everyone everywhere claim that King James was a homosexual and stained his legacy. You know why? Because they've always portrayed us negatively. Let me put that out there. Is that King James book over there? You see it? Where that King James book at? Let me see if I have there. See if it's over there. For those who might think that I'm, I'm making this up. King James the first and the sixth. It's over there somewhere. You don't see it? Okay, don't worry about it. I'll show it later. I'll show it later, but I have it here somewhere. Where is it? I'll show it before this, this class is over. Look, look down there on, on the shelf there. Yes, yeah, an orange book. Well, don't worry about it. I'll show it later. I, I have it here somewhere. It's okay. I can prove what I'm saying here. And before this, this class is over, during questions and answers, I'll find the book. And I'll show you King James was a black man, and it cannot be disputed. He was an Israelite. Right? But let me dove in now. Okay, we're at 868 people. 
do me a favor. If you just come in, hit the like button. I'm about to jump in. I just wanted to give it a little time. I usually I give it about 15, 20 minutes before I actually dove into the lesson. Right? And the lesson today, wickedness resides in our homes. Right? Now, I need you all first to go to, the first precept we're going to go to is Isaiah. 61. 61 and 1? Yep. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verse 1. The spirit of the Most High power is upon me, because the Most High have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And, and yeah, English means angel's tongue. It was us fighting against the Roman satanic Latin. That's the point I wanted to make. So this is the new tongue that the Most High would speak to his people, the English tongue. Brothers and sisters, we created all writing and literature. We created the original alphabet. We created it all, folks. It all, the Most High, straight from the heavens, gave that to the sons of righteous, the men of righteous. From Enoch, Methuselah, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We're the form of all things, folks. Folks. So at the very end, he would have it where there would be a universal language that would get to our people and spread to our people throughout the four corners of the earth. And it's English. We created the English language. Don't make, don't think, don't, when you think of England, don't think white people. Okay? That's part of, that's part of the deception. Okay, don't think white people when you think of England. Don't think of the Queen of England because she's not even from England, folks. She's from she's from Germany. So once King James fell, the Wetton family, which were Edomites, came in their stead and began to take on our names over in England. We're shattering the paradigm, folks. We're shattering the paradigm, okay? This is how we release the prisoners. Everything they taught you was a lie. Everything. Come on. The middle of verse 1. Let's Isaiah go. chapter 61 and the middle of verse 1. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He have sent Christ this was a prophecy of Christ, the spirit of Christ, to bind up the broken hearted. The heart is not speaking of in the scriptures a muscle that pumps blood. It's speaking of the mind. The broken minds. Christ was sent to heal the broken minds, to fix our brains. Our brains are broken. People are asking, what's going on with our people? Broke brains, folks. <laughs> That's what's going on. But the spirit of truth has come to fix these broke brains. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Now, on one level... Physical bondage. But, hey, don't make no bones about it, folks. Don't fool yourself. They would have never set us free if they didn't already have in place a greater way to enslave us, a greater form of bondage. <laughs> and I'm going to show you what that bondage is. We were never set free, folks. Come on. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And an opening of the prison of the prison to those who are bound. You seem free, right? But look at all the pressure you're under. The fear you're under. All these create prisons in themselves. 
the fear we have for our children, the fear we have walking out, out the door, the fear we have of ourselves and, and, and our own tendencies and impulses, which leads us in the wrong directions. These all create prisons. Read verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Most High and the day of vengeance of our power. And the day of vengeance. So who's bringing the vengeance? God brings the vengeance. We as a people cannot be teaching what, what we're going to do to somebody and all that. That's, that's straight garbage. Okay? The only power we have in captivity, in servitude, is, the ser is, is to serve the living God. It's to serve the Most High and to begin to correct ourselves. That's the only power we have right now. And that's all the power we need. It's utterly ridiculous. People out speaking with the word of God, talking about threatening people, what they're going to do. It, it's, it's asinine. It, it's straight idiocy at its best. Christ will bring the vengeance. Read. To comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn, like the mothers who are calling us. Read. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. Christ said in St. John 8 and 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Right? Let's go to, real quick, Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea. Mm -hmm. Hosea. Four and six. Hosea chapter four and verse six. Come on. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people, God's people, the people of the Bible, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What knowledge you lack? The knowledge of yourselves. The knowledge of your God. The knowledge of this Bible and the knowledge of your enemies. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just speaking of the enemies we can see. See? <laughs> but you'll see them in this lesson today. Mm. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. I will also reject thee. So what is the Most High saying here? Once he reject you, what happens? Read. That thou shalt not, excuse me, that thou shalt be no priest to me. I'm going to take away your priesthood. You will no longer, if you don't want to represent me in righteousness, you will no longer be the righteous priest on earth. I'm taking that away. And he stripped Levi of the priesthood. And we all know that the Levites are predominantly in certain parts of Africa, as well as Haiti today. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of the Most High, thy power I will also forget thy children. I will forget thy children. Because why? The priesthood was what? It was handed down from one generation of the sons of Aaron to the next. I'm taking the priesthood, that generational gift I gave Levi away, and no longer will you be priest unto me. That happened to the Levites. And they, they took all that spiritual power the Most High gave them over the children of Israel, being God's priests. And now they've turned to witchcraft and voodoo. I'm going to go into that soon. Go to Isaiah 5 and 13 now. Isaiah 
Isaiah 5 and 13. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Come on. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Therefore, my people have gone into slavery. Why? Because they have no knowledge. Because they have no knowledge of who? Themselves or their God. Read. And their honorable men are famished. And the honorable men are famished. And I'm going to tell you this. I see a lot of sisters. We have those phone calls. Where sisters are calling and saying, well, what's going on with our men? What's happening here? And saying the men are wrong and all that. And there is no good men. Right? And you know what? Your observations are correct. But you don't have the knowledge of how they got that way and how to repair your man. It's not just upon you to point out the faults of the man. It's upon you to figure this out according to the Most High and help restore him. And that's vice versa because Satan warned us pointing the fingers and going at each other. That's part of a divisive tool which keeps us imprisoned. The blame game. And I'm going to talk about that today. Yeah, there's good men. But there's, there's a lot of famished men also, according to the Bible. There's a lot of famished men. And I'm not, I'm not speaking of malnourished. We're talking about those that are famished from hearing and understanding the word of God. That's what makes a man. Okay. The most high made man in his image. That's what a man is. <laughs> okay. Not boys. A man in God's image is what the most high seen from the beginning as a man. Not boys. And see, a lot of these sisters grow up and they see this and say, well, these boys are still playing video games. These boys are still playing around. And begin to blame the boys. Not realizing to some degree that they have the power to actually help those young boys become men. They have that power. And, and I'm, I'm saying that on either side of things because you have a lot of men blaming women. We're going to talk about that too, to some degree. But I want to get to the origin of this topic. I'm going to get to the meat of it, folks. And the meat of it is, if you're under a spell, listen to me clearly, if you're under a spell, you're easily controlled on the highest level and your curses, meaning slavery, becomes generational if you don't recognize you're under a spell. Okay? And I'm going to go there in a, in a moment. What's wrong with the whole earth? The majority of people on earth are under spells. They're being controlled from the outside of them. I'm going to drop this, folks, today. So you'll know the enemies are in our homes. You want to know what's going on? <laughs> the whole earth, including our people, are under spells. Finish reading. And their multitude dried up. And our thirst. multitude is dried up with thirst. What thirst? What famine? Let's get it real quick. Let's, let's go to Amos real quick. Right? 
where it says there should be a famine in the land of hearing the word. You got it? Not of food and drink, but of hearing the word. One moment, let me get it here. Amos 8 and 11. What type of famine? What's going on? How are we famished? You see what's going on? I see everyone out there talking about what, what happened with Nipsey Hussle and what's going on and we have to change. Folks, let me tell you, the key ingredient of change isn't being discussed nowhere. Nowhere. Okay. That brother, like others, are under, were, were, are under a control mechanism. And the only safe space is outside of those spells. Okay, we're going to go right back to what we were doing. We're going to go back to selling drugs. We're going to go back to doing all the evil we always do under this spell. We're going to continue to, to pop pills and kill ourselves and hurt each other under this spell. <laughs> okay. What's missing out of all these narratives? God. The most high. Why did he, why did the most high send forth the spirit of death? See? The famine, Amos 8 and 11, read it. <clears throat> Amos chapter 8. And, and then, and, and here's the travesty of all. You have people out there comparing Regardless of what the brother, if the brother was doing good, all praises or whatever. But you have him being compared to Christ. Are you kidding me? That's showing you the state of this delusion, this spell we're under. Okay. We should have been crying out concerning the death and destruction of our people. We should have been turned back to the Most High and understood that we're under a curse which allow who? The sorceress to continually control and destroy us. And we'll identify them today also. Come on. Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Most High Power. Come on. That I will send a famine in the land. I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread. Not a famine of bread. Nor a thirst nor for a water. Nor a thirst of water. Because I tell you, my people have gone into captivity. And, they've, and, the, and their great men have become famished. They hunger and thirst. But this is not about food and water. Our people are eating fine. Read. But of hearing the words of the Most High. But of hearing the words of the Most High God. Right? Now, the topic of discussion, and I see we have about 1,200 people. Be sure to hit the like button here as you come in. Right? The topic of our discussion Wickedness resides in our homes. The hard truth, breaking down this spiritual battle and how to overcome the evil. Folks, listen to me clearly, and I need y'all to understand this. We're going to break this thing down. I have another piece of paper here. It's right there. One moment. Oh, there it is. There it is. I had every, have everything prepared. Right? Let's go to Psalms. Psalms. Mm -hmm. The 82nd chapter. Right? So that we can identify the evil, the controlled evil in our homes. 
That's going to be the basis of this particular lesson. For those who've come in late, keep in mind when we began to preference this particular Sabbath lesson, we talked about the clutter, which someone poignantly emphasized in our chat, that, that, that's usually cleaned out in our homes during springtime. Okay, but there's controlled clutter within us that resides, that's, res that's within our children. Things that are evil, we make excuses for. Okay, and if you keep the evil in you, it's controlled by a higher power that keeps our people in prison spiritually and otherwise. Read Psalms 82, and let's start at the first verse. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 1. Come on. The Most High standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The Most High stands in the congregation of the mighty. Speaking of Ahia. Read. He judgeth among the gods. He judgeth among the gods who are the angels. Read. Verse 2. How long will ye judge unjustly? How long will ye judge unjustly? Speaking of this world. Read. And accept the persons of the wicked. How long will we judge unjustly? And this is what God is asking us. And accept the persons of what? Of the wicked. Of the wicked. Right? How long will we accept the persons of the wicked? Now, here's a question for you mothers and you fathers. Are you accepting wicked in your home because it's your child? Because it's your blood? When, 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 when do we begin to cut off God's, God's presence and our agreement with him to side with blood. See, read that last piece again. Verse two, how long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? How long will you accept the persons of the wicked? Speaking of parents, you know why we're crying over our children being killed and destroyed and crying about them and saying, well, Lord, please help us with them. Why? Because we made them literally. We made them. And growing up, seeing the evil that they were partaking in. We excused it. We called it cute. Not realizing we were making what? Enemies of God. And, and, and on top of that, excuse their wickedness and evil. Why? That's my son. That's my daughter. But then what? As a result, we have to bury our sons. We have to see our daughters torn apart. Mm -hmm. Represented in this earth as harlots. No real legacy. When? How long? If the Most High can judge amongst the gods. In the beginning, Lucifer and one third of his angels disobeyed. And you know what God did? He kicked them out. He kicked them out. And I'm going to show you how deep this particular lesson is, folks. A, a child comes to the age of accountability at the age of 12. That's what this world knows. I don't care what they talk about when it comes to the age of this and the age as an adult. They become accountable at the age of 12. That's when their senses begin to kick in. That's when they begin to choose good or evil, folks. And if they start doing certain things, I'm going to give an example. If they start 
Snapchatting and putting their bodies out there. If they start putting tattoos all over themselves, that's a clear sign a demon is in the house. And I'm going to show you. And once it's in the house, it's being controlled by a higher mechanism. I'm going to show you, folks. So parents, you can cry, you can pray, you can ask your preacher, please help them. Guess what, folks? They can only, these people can only be helped if they want help. And they'll take everyone down in their wake. I'm speaking of demon possession, folks. And knowing when to let go. And that's hard as a parent. We're going to talk about it today. Read it again, Elder Lawyer. I mean, El <laughs> uh, Shabbat. Uh, Psalms 82 and verse 2. Come on. How long will ye judge unjustly? How long will you judge unjustly? Speaking of us. Read. And accept the persons of the wicked. Now, now check this out, folks. And this is just one level I'm breaking down right now. And I'm going to deal with it on every level. That's the children. But brothers and sisters, how many times we see in the neighborhoods where we've grown up, brother, women, grown women getting high with their own children? How many times? How many times you see a sister up the street with a, with a daughter and there's a young man in the house with the daughter. And the mother feels it's okay. Or vice versa. Right? And that's just on the lower levels. Okay? We're going to talk about the fathers too, but I'm dropping this right now. Because right now, the women... Unfortunately, by default, are leading the majority of homes in this earth today, especially in our community. See? Read. Verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Defend the poor and the fatherless. How do we defend the poor and the fatherless, brothers and sisters? First, the first defense is teaching our children righteousness according to God. That's the first level of defense. Right? Teach them right from wrong. Train up a child the way they should go, and when they are of age, they shall not depart from it. Or at least they'll know good from evil. Therefore, now you taught them right and they come in the house and they have a tad or something like that on them. Listen, you got to go. OK. You have to go. These are clear signs of demon possession, folks. And when people get demons in them. They become captives or servants to their controllers. And I'm going to show you who the controllers are today, folks. You're going to find out why love and hip hop and all these other things, all these other promotions. You're going to find out why they are being promoted more so than regular family television. Because those who walk in the spirit of, of, of these deviants on the screens are now under the, the control me mechanism of the controllers. And I'm going to show you. Come on. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. It's speaking of the poor. Mm -hmm. So Christ says he come to release the poor from their prisons. Right? Come on. Verse 4. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They're being controlled. See? So we as parents must have the knowledge of this. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Snatch your people back. 
take them back. They're being controlled. Read. Verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. Read. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. And the foundations of the earth are out of course. You must understand that first. Up is down and down is up. Okay. Everything has been turned on his head according to the word. So the normal function of this earth is what? Man in leadership. Any spirit that's against man in leadership is evil. It's wicked. I don't care what excuses they put out there or how they try to theorize equality and all that. It's wicked. Anything glorifying women over men is satanic, folks. It's out of course. Immediately, the whole thing goes out of balance. Okay? It's out of balance. Oh, what you have? You, you got it? Mm -hmm. The whole foundation is out of course. The Most High made man in his image. Gave men a high spiritual aptitude of logic as well as strength. To do what? To keep order, folks. Not to abuse as this world is trying to put out there. Not to hurt others, but to enforce righteousness is why man was created. Man was made to judge the evil. So now you throw that whole balance, you, you throw it out of course with, with feminism and damn well the woman is God and all this madness. One guy the other day teaching that, yeah, the, the scriptures teach that women had man. And I'm looking, and these are black people teaching this madness. Okay. And there's, guess what? And, 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 and putting things back in course saying man was made in the most high's image has nothing to do with downplaying or downing someone else. It's truth, folks. It's putting things back in order. Okay. Let's, let's deal with what is right now. The whole foundation of the earth is out of course. Why? Because women are focused on within this system. Okay. Even through education. I even, I was looking at a video the other day with the university where it showed that young boys are judged for not being good girls <laughs> in school. And they get frustrated and, and, and they get angry because the example of high academia is strictly focused on how girls learn. So we have to figure that, we have to focus on that and give the young boys more attention on the spiritual side concerning their true origin. We have to give the young men their power back. That's number one. That's number one. Okay. And see if they have the power on that side in the real world, they won't act out their aggression and their competition on the joysticks and on the video games. Now they're doing it in real life according to their true origin and position given to them by God. That competitive edge will be used to take things down on earth opposed to in a video game. Are you following me here? 
So they created the video game so that boys can inherently get out some of that aggression and competition, but in make-believe world. <laughs> Are you following me? They would rather be taking things down. <laughs> but the world don't give man space for that. So they stay boys. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child and put away childish things. But when I became a man of full age, I put down childish things. I understood, listen, this, this isn't make-believe anymore. I have a purpose. Right? Hope you hope you're following us today, folks, because we're going to get to the origin of all of this. You must first understand that everything is out of course, starting with man and woman. OK. Women, women are strong in their own right. OK, they're strong in their own right. OK, and there's no question about it. A woman can encourage the man in his strength to be the best he could be. And you know what? Even she'll be the better for it. Right? Now, what else you have there, I mean, uh, uh, Shabbat? Um, do you want to finish up the chapter, or that's it? Uh, you at the fifth verse? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go there real quick. Now, don't forget to hit the like button as you come in. Right? Now, I have to go into now, brothers and sisters, the wickedness, the wickedness that resides in our house and how to identify it. The topic is wickedness resides in our homes, the cold, hard truth. Right? Now, usually when the truth is being brought forth, instead of us admitting that something is wrong, and, and instead of admitting that what we're doing is contributing to the evil, Right? We tend to make excuses for it. Now, the first point of ridding ourselves or a home from demons is to admit that a demon exists, <laughs> which is causing havoc, destruction. You must first admit, when you, when you point out this, something that someone is doing something wrong and they start to give you excuses for it, they're protecting the demon. Either you know you're doing wrong or you don't know you're doing wrong. You can't make no excuses for what you're doing. Right? So what I'm, what I'm dropping, folks, is as we bring these things out, if people want to protect the demon, you have to know when to let go. Like, hold up, brother. Hold up. Why you? Hey, brother, you just stabbed me. Well, brother, you know I had to stab you, you know. You know, it's... You know, I had to stab you, brother, because I don't like, you know, I don't like how you've been operating around me. But, brother, you can't be stabbing me, right? So you try to correct a brother or sister, and they'll give you an excuse to why they're doing wrong. Or hurting you or taking things from you or lying or whatever the case is, and they'll make an excuse for it. Demon. When I say stabbing, it's not a literal stab. I'm speaking of... Uh, uh, jabs and doing certain things to you. And when you point it out, they'll give you an excuse. Right? Let's read this real quick. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 32 in your Apocrypha real quick. Now let's, let's, let's bring this in and narrow the scope of this. Just say if someone right, 
has a clear and present, what you can see, evil about them. And we're going to identify what those are in a moment. And you begin to say, listen, you can't be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that or you shouldn't have this on or you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't think like this. And they'll give you an excuse to why whatever they're dealing with exists. Listen to this. Ecclesiasticus in your Apocrypha, which is a part of the Bible, 32 and 17. Mm -hmm. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man or woman will not be corrected. There's nothing worse than someone's doing something wrong. You point it out. And instead of them saying, I'm sorry, comes with an excuse. That same person, instead of saying, I'm sorry, will give you the reason why they're doing wrong to you. Demon. Demon. That's what it is. We have to recognize that. I'm speaking about parents. When you raise your children and they're beginning to say things, they're lying to you, they're making excuses, and you know, you know, you know the truth already. You're not speaking to your baby boy or your baby girl anymore. Demon. See? A lot of us can't accept that. You, that's not the baby that, that, that sucked you, that sucked on your breast growing up and you nourished and, and, and put nice clothes on for the holidays. That's not your baby no more. Demon. Read it. Uh, Ecclesiasticus or the Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 17. Come on. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man will not be reproved. But findeth an excuse according to his will. Find an excuse according to his or her will. Find an excuse to continue to do what they're doing. Demon, there's nothing more frustrating, brothers and sisters, when someone is doing wrong and you're trying to help correct the people or talk with them about it. And immediately they're going to give you an excuse to why they continue to do wrong. What that means. Hey, I'm not going to change. I'm just going to keep doing this because this is what I want to do. Now, if they've come to that reality, what's wrong with us not coming to that reality concerning them? <laughs> they have come to the reality that, that, that there will be no change. So what is it about us who will look at them and say, well, you know what? They're telling us. They're making an excuse for, for what's evident, the wrong that's evident. But yet, it's something about us looking at them thinking that a change is coming. <laughs> Let me tell you, the Most High di didn't play in the beginning when it came to the fallen, the angels who disobeyed. When evil was found in them. And what's wrong with us? That a person is sitting in a lie in your face and making an excuse, and you're not recognizing that this is a spiritual battle here. This person has a demon in them. Mm. Right? Come on. A few verses up actually speak on that. Come on. About the judgment. Ecclesiastes 32 and verse 15. Yes. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Read that again. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. So if you seek the law of God, you're filled with the law of God. Read. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. But a hypocrite will be offended thereat. So that means you have a person who you try to correct or come to and help. And because you're trying to correct them, they become more offended and incinerated. Hmm. How dare you 
try to come at me and I seen you do this, that, and the other. Well, hold up. Even if I did this, that, and the other, does that change your evil? See? I'm giving y'all some levels of understanding on how to deal with spiritual warfare, folks. Automatically, they want to start talking about what you're doing and not admit the evil in themselves, the evil that's present. Demon. Now, I'm going to give an example for parents out there real quick, since we were on the children thing right earlier. Watch this. Okay. You see your child who's grown in the wrong, dead wrong. And your child start breaking down and saying, well, you didn't pay me no attention. When I was growing up, you didn't do this. And now you're feeling like, oh, my God, I know I did wrong. Oh, my God, did I do this? Now, now, now you're within yourself and automatically you begin to go into your parenting loving state. Right. And your child is looking at you to see if it's working right. And guess what? What that child did wrong is not even discussed. Once they use that on you. See, demon exists. You hug your child and say, I should have been there. I should have did this. I should have did that. And now the little demon go and scurry away to harm others after, after backing you down. See, because these demons have many characters. They'll come aggressive. If they feel it'll work and, and, and the demon can still use the vessel or they'll come and they'll come and, and pander on your sensitivities and cry all that to continue to do what? To control that vessel. They have captive. Are you following me here, folks? You caught them in a dead wrong right now. And they're going to talk about what happened seven years ago. <laughs> Are you, you, do you know when you're being played with? Well, you gave everybody else attention and you just left me out there. Oh, come on now. The demon need an out. Okay. And I'm just giving you this just one example. Someone says, I have one of mine who does that. <laughs> okay. Now, let's jump right into it, right? Let's go to Matthew 10 and 34 real quick. And then I'm going to, we're going to get real deep after this one, folks. We're going to show you the origin of this spirit, of these spirits that have us in captive. And how the government gained power on how to control the demons if the people under servitude get subjected to the demons the government controls. This thing is on every level, folks. <laughs> right? So how can your government control your children and everybody around without them actually doing anything, you might ask. See? See, I'm going way back. Christ says, as in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. You have to go back to the days of Noah to see what really went down, folks. It's like this, in a nutshell. If you, as a child of the Most High, purposely break the law of God. That breaking the law of God opens up a door and a demon comes in. That demon can be controlled by higher powers unseen. Now the demon was controlled the whole time by the higher powers, right? But you let it in. So now you're the puppet. 
See how it works? And it can be in your own home. I'm going to show you this today. And then, guess what? Sometimes you have to come to, the, to a conclusion and say, you know what? The best thing that can happen in this house, if you don't want to rid the demon, you and the demon must go. There will be peace in my home. You're not going to coddle no old demon from before the flood in my house. Okay, now if you want to be, I'm down. And guess what? This don't just apply with children. This apply with everyone, folks. Okay. Either you make a choice to, to tap that demon, be on the outside of you, which it was before. Or that thing is going to call all type, cause all types of chaos up in here. Or you and your buddy must get up out of here. Right? Let's go now. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Come on. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Christ says, think not that I've come to send peace on earth. Read. I came not to send peace, but a sword. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So when the truth of Christ come in, that does what? It released the prisoners. It's tear down the strongholds that been holding us. Right? And guess what? Christ be ghost busting. It's about pointing out the evil in the vessel and pulling all those demons out of a person that, that have been in since, since a child almost, that have been dormant there. Christ severs that spirit, his spirit, from the demons who have always held that temple or that body under subjection. Read verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Now, why would Christ set a man at variance with his father? This man knows right, but his father is in sin. His father coddles the demon. Right? You can have a man, a young man now, because it says through the mouth of babes, I will speak to my people, and that young man be begins to follow the Bible, believe in Christ, don't eat unclean foods anymore and make excuses for it. He don't go to Sunday worship knowing that it's pagan. And his father now becomes offended and begin to attack or treat his son differently. But guess what? Guess who's, guess who's helping his son? Guess whose spirit that's in that divide with the sword, Christ. That's Christ. Now, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the negative you taught me, Father. Because because my Father made you. I love you. I'm not gonna disrespect you, but I choose good. I choose righteousness. And there's a lot of good attributes I've received from you, Father, but I refuse to take on the demon. Christ sends the sword. See? Read. Verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother. And his daughter against her mother. Now, people are misconstruing this particular scripture and misinterpreting it. They're looking at the confusion in the hood where mothers is fighting daughters and saying this is Bible prophecy. No, that's just both demons. You got two demons right there. Okay, Th this is not talking about that. This is speaking of a daughter now has the truth and no longer will follow the wickedness in her home, even if it's her mother. 
and the mother gets offended. I raise you. How can you turn your back on me? And she start crying all the years I loved you. And listen, I'm not eating pork. I don't care what, what you say. <laughs> I'm slaving over the stove and all oh, you disrespect me. Listen, the same stove that cooks unclean food can cook clean food. Right? I don't know what you dealing with where you can't come around and my family is here on Christmas and you know great grandma, this might be her last year and all that. They'll pour it on, won't they? They'll just, oh, you know great grandma comes and she don't see it's going to break her heart. Listen, I'm not celebrating Christmas. See? That's Christ. Bringing the sword. See? Come on. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Here it is. You can have a daughter-in-law who's married to a husband. The husband has the truth. And now the mother-in-law is upset with the daughter because her husband, which is the son of the mother, is no longer under the mother-in-law's control because this man is looking to serve God now. You mean to tell me you don't go to church? It's that girl. I told you about that girl. I'm your mother. See? Christ bringing the sword. Cutting between bone and marrow. Cutting between what? The temple and the demon. Are you following me here? <laughs> Read. Verse 36. Come on. And a man's foes. And a man foes. That means a man's enemy. Shall be they of his own household. Shall be they of his own household. Now, your physical son, daughter, and family, are they inherently your enemy? No. These are people, these are your loved ones, these are your relatives, folks. But demons reside in temples. And those demons become an enemy to the Christ in you. Mm. See? Spiritual warfare. See how it works? Now, make sure y'all hit that like button because we're about to dove in. <laughs> it's not going to be too long. Oh, you had something else? The, the next verse, there's, there's more. Now I have more understanding on the next verse. Come on. Um, it's not that you can't love your family members, but it's when that love, you know, makes you now be a hypocrite to the truth you know in the Bible. Exactly. Because it's, it's not as if these people who are against what you're learning can dispute or prove what you're learning is incorrect. So it isn't that you're, that, that you're correct, that you're incorrect. You are adverse to the demon within these people. These people are hosts. Mm -hmm. I'll just read the verse. 30. Come on. Uh, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me. More than me because I'm bringing a sword, Christ said. Re is not worthy of me. You're not worthy of Christ. Re and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's the true context of this scripture. It's not saying that Christ is saying to hate your family. Mm -mm. It's saying that if you're willing to put up with the wickedness within your family over me, you're not worthy of the Most High in Christ. Mm -hmm. You must choose this day whom you will follow, especially if your family are hellbound. Mm. That's what Christ is speaking of. People who, who don't want change, people who would like to stay captive, stay servants of the flesh and wickedness. Mm. That's what Christ was dropping there. So I know so, so many people try to turn this scripture around and claim Christ is saying that you are supposed to hate your family. <laughs> right. No, that's not what Christ said. 
okay? Christ saying, listen, you come get this water and be baptized and rid yourself of the demon. Confess the demon. Confess what's in you. Admit you're wrong. And from that day on, be healed. But don't expect people to accept you the way you are. That's, that's evil and wickedness. No one is going to accept someone the way they are. And nothing I hate more than, than anything, folks, is there be, there be a clear and present evil that the person will admit exists. And they'll make an excuse for it. Now we're going to dove in. You all hit that like button, folks. Because we are about to dove in and show you demon possession 101. Demon possession 101. And folks, you're going to have to rid your house eventually of demons. Hold that. I'm coming right back with part two. Hold that. Hit the like button. Oh, yeah, I Been struggling with my family, and I know it won't be long, okay? We're about to go into part two of our lesson, folks. I'm sorry about that. Okay, make sure you all, again, hit that like button if you just come in. The wickedness resides in our homes, the hard truth. Okay, is our lesson today. Breaking down spiritual warfare on how to recognize wickedness and rid your homes of the demonic clutter now before i go into part two because we're going into the origin of this and also brothers and sisters to show how the governments of this world control those who are filled with demons and how you can identify when the demons exist is what i'm going to go into part two with right but before i go there let me announce that we're only week three in our Hebrew and Bible Academy since we're at the uh, halfway mark of this teaching right now. And I just wanted to do an intermission to say that 
We had week three of the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Week three. Our lesson is the promised seed. To show you how the righteousness from the Noah's Ark made it through the flood and brought forth a prodigy of Abraham. And to, we're going to also teach how when you look at Abraham's promise, it went to a specific people according to bloodline. And we're going to also tear down the lies they teach in the church that if you are in Christ, no matter what race, you're Abraham's seed. They convoluted and watered down God's promise. Okay, and I'm going to break that down to show you the true doctrine according to the Bible when it comes to Abraham's promise tomorrow. Exactly what does that mean? You'll find that out tomorrow in our, our academy. Now, if you're not in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, you can enroll by sending an email to gathering as one, the number one at AOL.com. Or go to HistoryTimes.org or just send us an email gathering as one at aol.com okay and this way we'll make sure we send to you the prior two weeks or the two weeks beforehand okay that's missed and you'll be caught right up and come come flawlessly into week three we have shapat with the news elder lawyer with with the uh hebrew, hebrew and of course i come in commentate on the news and bring forth and teach the lesson a must have our Hebrew and Bible Academy. Also, if you don't have uh, any ways of actually paying through credit card, you can send to the P.O. box, okay? Uh, when it comes to the Hebrew and Bible Academy, uh, you can make the check out to the Hebrew and Bible Academy or Gathering of Christ Church. And that's P.O. Box 946 Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA 19130. OK, and also we're setting up churches all throughout the earth. This is a serious year and I'm, I will be in different locations very soon. We're going to Florida and other areas. We have a new church here in, uh well, over in Chicago, brand new. Hey, we're rolling, but we cannot do this without your donations. And I'm going to ask you that if you can donate to the work, it would do much to make sure we continue this work and, and, and be expedient setting up these churches throughout the earth. Now, if you would like to send a donation to the Gathering of Christ Church and appreciate this work, you can also send donations or offerings to, you got it, the Gathering of Christ Church. Make sure you put offerings on the check or donations on the check. Okay. P.O. Box 946, Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19130. And I appreciate your contributions. And last but not least, I want to tell you about our calendar so that you'll know how to break down the holy days according to the most high in each month. There's a lot of holy days coming up and this will allow you to know and understand the schedules okay, of our holy days. One God, one faith, one people. And you can go to gatheringofchrist.org to order the calendar, okay? Can you ask me he asked you to give me a, a coffee. Here you go. Thank you. All right. So that's it on that. All right. I'll make a few more announcements, but please help us out so that we can finish this work and set up churches throughout the earth. Now, are you ready? Part two. Wickedness resides in our homes. Now, in order to understand the wickedness, you must understand the origin of demons. <laughs> to, to recognize a demon, right? We're going into the book of Enoch real quick, right? Grab my Enoch book. It's right there. You got it. No, no, it's, it's the paperback right there. Yep, you can put the other one on the floor. Right there. There you go. Thank you. Now, to order, in order to recognize a demon that's in your home, 
Because eventually they're going to begin to show themselves. When I say show themselves, you will see a person and, and, and you'll begin to not recognize them. Right? And parents deal with this all the time, right? You can tell that there's a change in your baby. Okay? They're saying things abnormal. They're acting abnormal. And even looking abnormal. <laughs> okay? That's not your baby anymore. So the demons, once they take hold and begin to control a vessel fully, they overtake the person and the person no longer exists. They become an entirely different person. Right? So, first and foremost, let's give you the origin of these spirits. 15 and 11. Yeah. We're getting straight to it out of the book of Enoch. Just get the chapter and verse. And the reason why we're going to the book of Enoch is because when you go into Genesis concerning the flood, Genesis is really an overview, but it doesn't go into detail why the Most High had to flood the earth. Okay? A destruction came because why? Homosexuality was at an all-time high and began to bully and threaten the righteous, similar to what we see today. Animals were cross-spliced. Giants were in the earth. And eventually, the sons of Seth would get destroyed altogether, if, if not for the Most High warning Noah to build an ark. See? So, eventually, the spirits that came from the interaction of the celestial with the terrestrial, eventually, because of that disobedience, there were spirits made in the earth out of this, of the Nephilim. Now, because the, these spirits had no place with God, they would have to roam on earth until judgment. That's why when Christ ran into the man with demons, the demons looked at Christ and says, who are the, uh, we recognize you, son of God, Yeshua. Have you come to torment us before our time? They realize there's a day of judgment for them. Right? Well, these demons began at the flood. And when the Nephilims die, there's no place for them. So they, they must roam on earth as demons. So you must know what a demon is, folks. Okay? You must know what they are in order to recognize whether or not someone you love is turning into one or is being controlled by one. Okay? Chapter and verse. Let's get straight to it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the book of Enoch, chapter 15 and verse 11. Enoch 15 and 11. Read. And the spirits of the giants afflict, afflict, oppress, oppress, destroy, destroy, attack, attack, do battle, do battle. So when you see people fighting, okay, when you see what we see, what, what, what you all recognize and think is entertainment, world star hip hop and people are pulling each other hair off and all that other crap. When you see world star hip hop and there's battles and fights and all that and people smacking people up and all that. Those are not your babies. Okay. Read. And work destruction on the earth. They work destruction on the earth. Read. And cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger. Now, one thing about the demon, folks, is what? It's insatiable. So when a demon possesses a person... They pick up insatiable habits. Okay. There's terms they have in this earth, like what they call a nymphomaniac. A person who can, cannot control themselves, their flesh. That's a demon, folks. When someone becomes gluttonous to the point where they'll eat to the point of obesity. Mm. Demon. You notice when young people, a lot of people, when they smoke weed, they're like, yeah, yeah, it's, give, it's giving me the munchies. That's not your baby talking. 
Okay. They get in the munchies? Demons. Why? Read that part again. They what? They take no food. They take no food. But nevertheless, hunger. They hunger and thirst. The demons hunger and thirst. So if you give them a temple, they'll use your temple in an attempt to do what? Fulfill that insatiable appetite. See? Come on. And thirst. And thirst. Mm. And see, and that's the power of fasting. That's why Christ told the disciples, some spirits go out, will not go out, except it be through fasting and prayer. Mm. Where you and the person with the demon are fasting together. Because eventually, the demon will see you're not feeding it or not satisfying your flesh enough for it. And it'll, it'll make its way to a McDonald's where, where there's a lot of hosts there for it. Okay. Come on. And cause offenses. And cause offenses. A person who's not satisfied unless there's friction. Hold up now. A person who's never satisfied unless there's an argument, folks. Have we ever met people like this? That's not your baby. Okay. How many times you made an excuse for a person where you know this person would just fly off the handle over everything. So you have to watch everything you say around them because everything turns into an argument or, or, or a fight or a and debate, a debate. We have to walk on eggshells around a person because you can't even speak naturally without, if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to offend this person. That's not your baby. We're dropping it today, folks. Demon possession, folks. Spiritual battle. So, if you find yourself losing yourself, eating all the time, drinking all the time, insatiable, only thinking about the flesh, not connecting with the Most High, don't want to pray, don't want to think on righteous things, nine times out of ten, a demon resides. See? Now, that's what we call spiritual recognition. The first stage of the battle is understanding your enemy. But what if the enemy is in you? See? Okay. Here it is now. And see, I'm not that way. When I'm saying I'm not that way, when I say I'm not that way, I mean... If I'm around a person that's always that, like, 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 like that, you're not going to stop me from, from being who I am in the most high because the demon is in you. Okay? That's not gonna, I'm not going to lower my gifts in the most high and who I am, knowing that I have no ill intention against you or anyone else because you want to coddle a demon. I'm not into that. I will meet you where we need to meet. OK, but you're not going to bully me into doing what? Holding or sheltering what's in me to give. OK. And they recognize those they can do that with. If they if, if, if and that's the demon in them. Like, OK, I can't play that. Yeah, yeah, I can't be. Yeah, yeah. You can laugh and joke. You can be. We, I'm not the one for that. Yield. I'm not going to succumb to no demon and pander to your attitude. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because the demon is looking always to have the higher ground. And to put everyone under their bully, their spirit of bullying. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's getting good, right? 
After the flood, what happened? Let's go to the book real quick. We got another book. Let's go to the book of Jubilees. Because after the flood, the Most High washed the Nephilim seed away. But the spirits were still on earth. Right? But then in the book of Jubilees, which is also referred to out of Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter, where it tell you the Most High showed Moses the secrets of the times. That's the book of Jubilees. Referred to us out of the Apocrypha from Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. That's the book of Jubilees. So after this, what happens? Well, after this, brothers and sisters, one of Noah's sons, eventually, the children of Noah, found tablets that was written in stone by the Nephilim. So when the storm was coming, Noah got on his ark. The, 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 the fallen so-called gods or angels or judges over the people before the flood began to chisel in stone their actions before the flood. Also, give, also so, so that they can leave mankind information to resurrect the evil on this side of the flood. Well, one of Noah's sons or children of Noah found the records of the giants or Nephilim or the fallen ones. Now check out what happened after the flood, folks. Let's get eight and one. Let's get uh and guess what folks? A lot of what we're teaching right here, a lot of our brothers and sisters knew this years ago if they were in the academy, but I'm gonna teach it on a level in which we can apply it to ourselves and rid ourselves of what? The wickedness which resides in our homes. Right? Jubilees 8 and 3. Let's read it. <clears throat> the book of Jubilees chapter 8 and verse 3. Come on. And he found a writing which former generations... Right before that, it tell you who found it. Verse 1. Canaan. Uh, yeah, Canaan. Go ahead. Uh, Jubilees chapter 8 and verse 1. Come on. In the 29th Jubilee. In the 29th Jubilee. In the first week. In the beginning thereof, uh, Afarxad took to himself a wife, and her name was Rasu Eja. Come on. The daughter of Susan, the daughter of Elam, and she bare him a son in the third year in this week. And he called his name Canaan. And he called his name Canaan, read. And the son grew, and his father taught him writing. Taught him writing. And he went to seek for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. So at this time, the sons of Noah were looking for their own territory. This was before the earth was multiplied as we see it today. Read. Verse 3. And he found a writing which former generations had carved on the rock. On the rock, like your Gilgamesh tablets, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Read. And he read what was thereon. And he read what was thereon. Read. And he transcribed it and sinned owing to it. Go on. For it contained the teaching of the watchers. It contained the teachings of the watchers. The watchers are written of in the book of Peter in the New Testament, as well as the book of Jude. In the New Testament, second Peter two and four tell us that that the most high spared, not the angels that sinned. They were watchers. Mm -hmm. This is why the most high flooded the earth and damned the watchers children. Now those children of the watchers are now what demons. After the flood, Canaan found the writings that was left inscribed in stone of the watchers. Read. For it contained the teaching of the watchers in accordance with which they used to observe the omens of the sun. So they used it to observe the omens of the sun, and that's why most religions worship the sun. Read. And moon. Or like in Persian mythology or Islam, they worship the crescent moon. 
like the Jewish people today who set up all of their holy days after the moon. Read. And stars. And stars. And all the signs of heaven. And all the signs of heaven. They begin to worship the stars. And a, another way of, ex, of, of example of that is those who follow the horoscope. That's involuntary worshiping of angels. Those that deal with astrology. These were taught by the fallen ones before the flood, which led to the flood. Then it was found by Canaan and began to get taught in secret against Noah and Noah's children. That's number one. Now, eventually, you can, you can, I'm just, you know, we're just giving you a little, what I would call clues to attach. What I like to do is make it easy to be understood. Clear it all up in how it relates to us today. At the Tower of Babel is where this information was being taught. To build a construct back to the heavens where the watchers came from. All religions have this same ideology that was found by Canaan. Including the Egyptians. The people who've enslaved our people, our forefathers in the past. All right? So it's no wonder, folks. Listen to this now. You have more on that, right? I think that's it. It goes into Peleg. There's another book I have. Um, that comment. Pass it to me. I need that. There's a, a book I made right right there on that chair over there. Come on. Including the Egyptians. Let me read this real quick. I'm going to read this. Including the Egyptians. Let's see here. This is page 140, right? Let me read this real quick. Because eventually after uh, um, Canaan got the information, the sons of Ham picked up the information. Listen to this out of the recognitions of Clement. Clement, a direct student under Peter. Listen to this. And I met Clement, the 27th chapter. For these are some other causes. A flood was brought upon the world. As we have said already and shall say again, and all who were upon the earth were destroyed, except the family of Noah, like I've mentioned who survived with his three sons and their wives. One of these by the name of Ham unhappily discovered the magical act and handed down the instruction of it to one of his sons who was called Mizraim, the Egyptians. Right? And from the race of the Egyptians, the Babylonians who built the tower, the Persians, and the, listen, listen to this, listen to, and from the race of the Egyptians, Babylonians, and the Persians are descended. We talk about, when you speak of the Persians, we're talking about the Iranians. Okay, listen to this. And also, the East Indians, folks. When you see them run around with that dot on their head, they're Hamites. They put the stigma of Hamites on us. They're the Hamites. Listen to this. Him, the nations who then existed called Zoroastrian, you know, Zoroastrian doctrine, 
comes from India. Admiring him as the first author of the magic art under whose name also many books on this subject exist. He therefore being much <clears throat> and frequently intent upon the stars and wishing to be esteemed as a God among them began to draw forth as it were certain sparks from the stars and to show them to be men in order that in order that the rude and ignorant might be astonished, astonished as with a miracle. And desiring to increase his estimation upon him, attempted these things again and again until it was set on fire. <laughs> Speaking of a spontaneous combustion, so right? He was trying to create sparks. Like exactly. Stars. He was using magic to try to create magic and all that and end up, <laughs> end up becoming a victim of his own peril. Right? But I need y'all to examine something real quick here, folks. This is the origin of the religions that are controlling us now. I read further in this book, and it says that these particular, check this out, these particular religions created idols and they created idols so that the nations can now take the demon that was prayed into the vessel into their homes to be controlled. Again, the same spirits floating around were prayed into vessels so that the people can be controlled by the vessel in the privacy of their own home. Also was taught, brothers and sisters, on how certain leaders realized that they can control demons through certain magic. Now, suppose the demon go into one of these people. Right now, you can control your vessels and have them serve you like regular vessels. But now, instead of the vessel being an idol or wood or stone, the vessel becomes people. And then chaos breaks out throughout all of our homes. See, because now they're being controlled outside the influence of their parents. This thing is deep, folks. Listen to this, and I said it earlier. They would not have set us free, folks. I'm speaking of the demons who control this world if they didn't have a higher form of captivity prepared for us. <laughs> Check this out. Right? Look at this here. The construct of Washington, D.C. Right? The construct of Washington, D.C., esoteric, upside down pentagram. Right? They found out that they can use symbols and different, what you would call witchcraft to control spirits and send spirits out as a form of, of control on people through certain constructs. So this world we call, this place we call America wasn't built on Christian Judea values. It was built on controlling the masses through demonology. So it's upon them to have the demons find a way for us to allow the demons in our homes. Look at this here. What do we have here? The one world order assumed on your dollar bill over the great pyramid sphinx and the cap and over it is a capstone with the eye of the all seeing eye of Lucifer using the same ideology of control 
that was used against us in ancient Egypt. Magic. Magic to keep us controlled. Magic. See, and that's why I mentioned years ago, or a few months ago, mm -hmm. how they, in, they invited all the immigrants all in our country and gave them Dunkin' Donuts and mm -hmm. gave them different... They all get a little piece of this to keep us controlled under their magic and sorcery. East Indians, Arabs... Asians who are over what you would call the Buddhist teachings. They're all in it together using magic in their temples against us, controlling the demons that are now in our children. Yeah. Yes, Erica. It's deep that you should mention that with the religions. Yeah. That these other nations coming over. One of the other, uh, and you spoke on this years ago, one of the new things now, or less spoken of things, especially with what you, you was mentioning about these symbols, is, um, what do they call that now, yoga. Yeah. These poses that they do in yoga is, is within the same vein of these images and idols. It invokes demons. Uh, that's in your yoga. Look at that. I want to read this out of Clement also. Check this out. This is, this is uh, chapter 26 where, where it reads, Now therefore, since you do not yet understand how great darkness of ignorance surrounds you, meantime, I wish to explain to you whence the worship of idols began in this world. And by idols, I mean these lifeless images which you worship, whether made of wood, earthenware, stone, brass, or any other metals. Of these, the beginning was in this wise. Certain angels, having left the course of their proper order, began to favor the vices of men, and in some measure to lend unworthy aid to their lust in order that they, by these means, they might indulge their own pleasures and more. And then that they might not seem to be inclined of their own accord unworthy services, taught men that demons could, by certain arts, that is, by magical invocations, be made to obey men. And so as from a furnace and workshop of wickedness, they filled the whole world with the smoke of impiety, the light of piety being withdrawn. So they found a way, since there was no original space for these spirits that came from the Nephilim, there was no original space for them in heaven or in earth, that now man can find magical invocation to control them if they build the proper constructs like what you see in Washington, D.C. Okay? These are control mechanisms over spirits. The same way you have a control tower that can send Wi-Fi signal to your phone? Well, Washington, D.C., in other areas, like in London and all these other areas, are control mechanisms over demons if the people allow them in. Okay? This is, this is MK Ultra on steroids, folks. If you sin, now you let a demon in that can be controlled by the elite powers who work in darkness, who are sorcerers, like your Hasidic Hasidic communities, like your so-called Jewish communities, when they're all black and with the curly locks and all that. <laughs> These are sorcerers, folks. They can pray and have chaos go on all amongst our community because we allow demons into our vessels, into our homes. Check that out. So how do you recognize 
when that child is no longer your baby. <laughs> right? And that a demon is in your home. Well, let's go to Leviticus 18, 1 through 4. Now. That means you put down yoga, you put down all the new age teachings, you put down every statue because brothers and sisters, before those statues are sold to you, demons are prayed into them. Okay? Ancient demons. When you go to these African festivals and you pick up these masks and all these so-called knickknacks and all these things, they are a form of control. It's time to clean house. Not just with the physical idols, but the people in your home who made themselves into one to be controlled. This is why the Most High told Moses this. Let's read Leviticus 18, 1 through 4. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 1. And the Mosai spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them. And say unto them. I am the Most High, your power, after the doings of the land of Egypt. After the doings of the land of Egypt, which is what? Magic. Come on. Wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. <laughs> Read that again. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Wherein ye dwelt, ye should not do. Do not act under what? The spirit of Egypt. Go on. And after the doings of the land of Canaan. Come on. Whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So the Most High was showing us how to stay under his hedge, folks, and not be controlled by the magic of Egypt. Hence, the law written of in the Bible. That's our protection. Okay? Usually when someone sins against God, they're, satisfy, they, they're satisfying their own impulse, right? And believe that that's good because what? It feels good, this is what I would like to do. Not realizing that this demon is not just restricted to that one place of satisfaction for you. This demon is gonna cause all types of chaos in your life. It'll give you that one area of, of what you would call some level of, 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 you know, satisfaction. But it'll come with everything else, folks. So when you open that door, now the powers that be controls your vessel, your impulses. They control how you think. They control how you feel. They can do all that. And they'll cause death, destruction, chaos, everything just written just explained to us out of the book of Enoch. They're going to give you that one level of satisfaction with a price. And the higher witches and warlocks and sorcerers controls those demons you, you, you let in. Right? What verse you, you left off at? I finished verse three in my first four. Come on. Ye shall do my judgments. You shall do my judgments. And keep mine ordinances. And keep my ordinances. To walk therein, I am the most high, your power. I am the most high, thy God. Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 28 so that you'll know when you're recognizing a demon amongst you. He says, we cannot walk after the ways of the Egyptians. Now in Leviticus is going to give us in the next chapter some examples of how the Egyptians were walking in demonology and witchcraft and sorcery. Right? Let's go to Leviticus 19 and 28. 
Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. For the dead. For the dead. Nor print any marks upon you. Neither print any marks upon you. Tattoos. I am the Most High. I am God. And real quick as well, some say that you, I think it's in a comment, someone said that you can get tattoos so long as they're not for the dead. This is quite clear that any prints on you, dead or not, you cannot do. Exactly, because why? You have to realize the spiritual significance of that. The spiritual significance of you getting tattoos on you is in recognition of a former demon. Through this demonology and sorcery and witchcraft and invocation that actually those that control this world like the Masons, like those who are dealing with demonology in the occult, they realize that if you have a certain image on you, there's a demon that they can control you with in recognition of the spirit that came in. There was a demon that came to your thought and said, you know what, I need to print this. I need to put this on my body. That's to follow in your temple. So automatically you're under some form of control that now the controllers can utilize with, utilize you with. See, you're under control now. And that's a clear indicator that you are a slaved vessel. You only brand slaves or cattle. So automatically on the spiritual side of things, you're under a control of a demon. And this is how parents know when your children are changing. When they come in with tattoos, demon. And when they tat to the point where you can't even recognize them anymore, all over their face and neck, know that your child no longer exists, folks. Okay, that's after the workings of Egypt. That's witchcraft and sorcery at its highest. Okay, no one can make a, a better temple canvas than the Most High. When I say a canvas, something that he can he can utilize and overtake mm -hmm. inwardly. When you see people tatted all over, you're looking at a suffering person, a person who barely exists anymore, okay, who's being controlled by higher powers on the dark side, being controlled by dark forces, a clear indicator of a person who made themselves into an idol, right? Let's go to Psalms 97 and 7. Before you go to Psalm 97 and 7, let's get 1 Kings 15, 9 through 12. 1 Kings chapter 15 and verse 9. Yes. And in the 12th year of Jeroboam, King of Israel reigned Asa over Judah. Come on. And forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Most High, as did David his father. Come on. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land. So the first thing when it came to cleansing after the evil being practiced in Israel, the first thing that cleansed the land was to take away all the Sodomites. Okay. You have to realize that Sodomites being broken vessels, okay, are subjected to high demon possession. So in order to, to get to, to have some level of civility and peace in the land, the first thing had to happen was all Sidomites had to be ridded out of the country, folks. 
because sodomites can be easily controlled by the controllers. And, and, and believe it or not, when they become reprobate, their target becomes children to separate the parents from the children and to rape and to make more damaged people who can now be controlled by the dark forces working in high places like your Masons, like all those that are under these fraternities of secret societies. They can now pray in it through invocation and control your society using these broke people. So the first stage of cleansing was getting rid of all the sodomites who were already controlled by demons. Mm. That's what was going on in Egypt. Sodomites, homosexuality. So if you have a child with that spirit in them, that's no longer your child. Come on. Verse 12. And he took away the sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols. And how do you know that's their key? That's their key weapon against us right now. You can say what you want against a black person. Say something against a homosexual and see what happens. Say one thing against a homosexual because that's their key useful tool to destroy. Come on. And removed all the idols that his father had made. And he removed all the idols his fathers had made. Why? There are certain people who can be controlled by the government powers who are sorcerers and witches and warlocks. See? See? who have made themselves into idols, homosexuals, vessels to be used by demons. Okay. Let's go to Psalms 97 and 7. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 97 and verse 7. Come on. Confounded be all they that serve graven images. Confounded be they who serve graven images. That's one level. And I'm saying, be careful, folks. Y'all go to these so-called black conscious uh, 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 fairs that have vendors out there and all that with little uh, uh, crazy carvings of faces and feathers and all types of crazy things. I've seen one guy holding a statue with nothing but people cramp into it speaking some African crap. And I'm like, do, do we not know he's holding a demon? You go into these places, you purchase what you think is art, but you're bringing demons into your home. Okay? You have to clean your house, folks, and understand what's in your home. Don't go out and bring some antique or something in your home that you don't know where it came from. This is how they pray demons into stuff of control. Now they don't have to do that. Our children, the people we know now, are walking idols to be used by the powers that be. It's upon us to protect ourselves and our children from them. Okay, be careful who you let stay in your home. If possible, never let anyone outside of your circle stay in your home. When I say your circle, your circle of righteousness. And then you got to be careful with that too. Okay. You can spend the night, but you're not living up in here. <laughs> okay. You must be careful, folks. Where are you? Verse 7. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Who boast themselves of idols. See? Because now you have people who boast themselves as, as idols. No longer is it about the Buddha or about the images that they have, like the cross and all these other images where demons reside. 
People themselves have made themselves into idols of control. Right? They've made themselves into idols where the powers that be, the dark forces ruling the world can now control them. And guess what? They're sleeping up in your house. You have no, you can't tell them what to do. But yet something, some entity somewhere is telling them what to do against your wishes and against the most high God. Hmm. Where are you? Verse 8. Come on. Zion heard, uh, sorry, the end of verse 7. Worship him, all ye gods. Verse 8. Zion heard and was glad. And the okay, let's stop right there. And let's go to Isaiah 47 and 1. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1. Come on. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Oh, come and sit in where? In the dust. In the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon. O virgin daughter of Babylon. Read. Sit on the ground. Sit on the ground. Read. There is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans. Come on. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Because why? The daughter of Babylon, which is America, made herself, pattern herself after ancient Babylon through what? Witchcraft and sorcery. After ancient Egypt through what? Using witchcraft and sorcery. This land was built on occultism, not Judea principles. Everything they claimed to you was a lie. This land was not built on righteous, using righteous people, folks. Children of the devil started this republic, began this republic. Read. Verse 2. Take the millstones and grind meal Uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Come on. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. Now, let, let me say something real quick, all right? Let me delete this guy's uh, chat. Let me say this real quick, brothers and sisters. When we're teaching, no one else can come in here and bring any scriptures. Okay, you're here to learn and be a part of what's going on within this Sabbath with the elders teaching. You can't, br you, you can't bring no scriptures or no understanding while we're teaching. Okay, this is what you do in the comment, on the comment board once our class is done, if you would like. And those will, will still be screened. Okay, now, if you would like to teach, it's easy for you to make a page to do so. But when we're teaching here, you're listening. And not disrespecting others who are here to learn and to grow and get the food the Most High have coming forth on the Sabbath. Okay? Thank you. Read it. This is Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. I will take vengeance, and what? I will not meet thee as a man. I will not meet thee as a man. So the Most High will bring the judgment and break the controllers of the spells. Right? Come on. Verse 4. As for our Redeemer... The power of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Come on. For thou shalt no more be called 
the lady of kingdoms. She shall no longer be called the lady of kingdoms. Why? The Most High God, through the Spirit of Christ, through the Spirit of Yeshua, from the throne, from the heavens, is breaking the spell off of the servants, like I've written, like we read in Isaiah 61. The spell is being broken. Our people are now awakened. We are waking up, folks, and coming back to the knowledge of our God. Okay, so it's upon the sorceress to ramp up their control over those who are subjected to sin and use these vessels that are being controlled to fight and to and to try to just all out destroy the righteous who are left come on verse 6 i was wroth with my people it says the Most High God, Ahia, says he was wroth with, with his people. He was hard on us. Read. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into, the, into thine hands. Because of our disobedience, we were handed over for a time under these Gentiles, under these pagans, for a time. For our disobedience. Read. Thou didst show them no mercy. But while we were under the hand of our oppressors, like the East Indians and the European whites who are pagans, okay, they showed us no mercy. They even lied and claimed we was Ham. <laughs> okay? They lied and, 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 and miseducated us. We are the children of Israel. That's who we are. They showed us no mercy. Read. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. And But yet they didn't lay these things to thine heart. Read. Neither didst remember the latter end of it. Come on. Therefore hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Now to you so-called elite, who through demonology have controlled the sinners of this earth. The Most High is telling you that you haven't taken this to heart, that he would break your spell over our people. Okay. Read. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Come on. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day. The loss of children. This is what's going to happen. War. And widowhood. And widowhood. They War is coming. Read. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. In their perfection. There will be a war that will break out. And as a result of that, Babylon will be no more. And all power will go back to ten horns for the space of an hour. Rome will rule before the coming of Christ. And there will be no place such as or called in this earth as the old USA. It's prophesied to go. And all those who've made themselves idols and have been subjected to the demons and, and have just lived in pleasure without recognizing the Most High will fall with her. Hmm. So it's upon us to say, listen, I don't have to wait for God to bring that judgment. I have, po not in my house, I have hmm. power to make sure the demons are on the outside of my house, regardless of my, 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 my personal care for them. In spite of whether or not that's my child or that's somebody I care about. I have power to bring forth judgment in my home. Mm. Before this, I'm not waiting for the vengeance of the most high to clean, to clean house. So 
See? Come on. You're not going to be controlled by this system living in my house, having demons all up in your tats, all up on your sin and doing whatever you would like to do. No, you eventually that demon is going to say, yeah, I think he's sleep upstairs. He's been trying to, to suppress you for years. He don't understand what you've been going through. Go deal with him. <laughs> no, nobody. That, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. These are the same people that will take on the mark of the beast and be controlled on every level. There's clear signs of those who are just looking to satisfy themselves and care nothing for the most high God. It's clear. Let me tell you, it's, they're not even hiding it anymore. These are the people that will readily get the mark of the beast folks and be used as Satan's agents against all that's right. They're being used now. Another point of recognition that I didn't point out. The spirit of adultery and the spirit of harlotry. A woman who can't keep to herself and don't understand on every level, on every level, folks, the purity and virtue that comes with chastity. It tells us in the book of Proverbs, that is the spirit that leads to a bed and that bed leads to hell. Okay. Finish reading. This is the middle of uh, Isaiah 47 and verse 9. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. Come on. For the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. For they have trusted in their wickedness. Read. Thou hast said, none seeth me. And they claim none can see them. But you know what? We see them. We see them. See, they work within what you would call secret societies or fraternities. And they believe, they believe, let me get it here. They believe that through the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, they can see all and control all, but yet no one sees them. But we can see them. We know they're controllers. They're fraternities. Okay. They're children of the devil. Anyone you know that's that, that have been initiated on every level, folks, into uh, uh, fraternities in your colleges are part of it. I don't care what they call themselves, Alpha, Phi, Sigma, whatever. They will work for the devil against you they'll learn esoteric invocations to control the poor that's why they're not looking to help the poor the poor will always be with us they're looking to control the poor to grandize and to enrich themselves be it masons be it prince hall york right or scottish right they learn invocation to control what they would call the wasteless eaters or the unlearned or stupid within society Okay, this is how they work. This is how they excuse their behavior. Fraternities, be it if you are with a gang, blood, crypts, or gangster disciples, you can name it, whatever you want to name it. All of these are messianic fraternities in its inception with secret rites and secret codes. Okay, these are fraternities under the, under the devil. All the way up to whether or not you're a politician. And now in order for you to make your way up the political ladder, you must join in secret oaths and rights. You are now a part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's one mechanism like a pyramid controlling them all. You got the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, who's Satan, their father. Then you have another level of the elite powers or royalty of this earth. Then you have the religion fashion under them. Then you have the poor fraternities like in your colleges under them. 
and at the base bottom floor of it are your gangs who are actually executing the will of Satan against the poor people of God. See? Read. <clears throat> Verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. They have trusted in thy, their wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Come on. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And the wisdom and their knowledge have perverted them. They believe, some of them convince themselves, folks, that they're doing good. They convinced that God's hands in this. And folks, let me tell you, it's not just the men. It's the women fraternities too, like the Eastern stars who are the top witches and warlocks. What do you think Oprah is? Oprah is a top Eastern star that's being controlled by the Hasid, the, the Hasidic community. She's an Eastern star. She's a witch. Okay. Read. The end of verse 10. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Come on. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. It's coming. Read. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Come on. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. The Most High is going to destroy their idols. And he's breaking the psychosis of the poor. And believe it or not, folks, those at the bottom rung, the bottom floor, the children of Israel who are, who are now being freed by the Spirit of Christ, who know their Israel, who are following this Bible, we will become their judges. This is why they're working so hard to suppress us. Okay. Their, their judgment is not going to come from those over them. It's going to come from those who have been set free under them. <laughs> okay. Finish reading. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Mm. Stand now with thine enchantments. Now stand with your enchantments, read. And with the multitude of thy sorcery. The multitude of thy sorcery through pharmaceuticals as well as your religious sorcery, your witchcraft, your controlling of demons. Okay, they say, you, you, I'll tell you what, we can't control everyone in the house, but if we can get one sinner in the house and turn him, we'll just allow them to let the demon in who will wreck the whole shop. It takes one child. And see, and this is the reason they wanted phones every place. Now parents think that it's, it's a good thing to get have every child with a phone. Just so that you can call and check on me and I'll know where you're at at all times. That's just one level of, of, of carry, folks. But the majority of the time, it's not you on your phone with your child. It's your child being linked to the beast and being controlled to be used as a demon to topple your, your, your whole home. Okay? They just need one demon in your house to wreck shop, folks that'll lie on you, that'll hurt you, that'll hurt your family, hurt your children. They just need one demon in, one unruly demon whom they can control. Usually, it's family, unfortunately. So it's up to us to make a decision and look at our house and say, well, okay, where, where's the demon at? Where do he or she reside? Okay. Now, if you're not willing to rid yourself of this spirit, you in that spirit must go. Okay. You in my house. My house is the most high's house. Don't let no one guilt you into keeping a demon living up in your house, folks. They will destroy you. Read it. Verse 12, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. Come on. If so. It says labored from thy youth, mm -hmm. from the time those stones were found, from the time the Tower of Babylon was built, from the time the empires of Egypt was using it. 
And as and at the time, America became a country. It was built on witchcraft and sorcery, not through Judeo Christian Christendom like they claim. Mm. America was built on sorcery, witchcraft, and evil. Read. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. And how do you know it was built on that? Well, Christ says you shall know them by their fruit. What have this country or the powers that be produced? What have they produced since their inception? Has it gotten better? <laughs> Their fruits is witchcraft, sorcery, and evil. Or they wouldn't allow it to fester and grow on the land. See? Come on. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers. Let's see you astrologers. Let's see where, th where that gets you. Mm. And the stargazers. Let's see where that gets you. See, your knowledge of the stars in astrology only can work over the poor and ignorant and the abused and hurt and those who, know, who, know, who don't know better. It's your form of control to be look, looked upon as an idol over the unlearned. See? But the Most High has taken away your power because the unlearned are now learning of themselves. They're learning that they're the children of God and you no longer have control over them. See? Come on. The monthly prognosticators. The monthly pro prognosticators, which are those that deal with the horoscope. Simple as a day's old. If you want to know what's going to happen, read the Bible. Mm. Read. Stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Let's see if you can save yourself from the war which is upon us. Come on. Verse 14. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah was burnt with fire, fire is coming to Babylon. See? So it's time for us to clean house to make sure there's not a demon in our house that will lead to the, your house being burned down before the judgment. Last but not least, let me go to Ephesians 6 now. Hold on before you get that. Mm -hmm. One moment. Let's read it. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians 6 and 11 in the New Testament. Put on the whole armor of the Most High. Put on the whole armor of the Most High. Starting off with his law, statutes, and commandments, folks. If you have someone in your home that don't want to follow the law, statutes, and commandments, they have to go. Period. They're a ticking time bomb. A ticking di demonic time bomb. Read that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I'm saying this is because in our communities now, what we have is we have full grown parents. It's a shame that a man isn't in the, in, in the home anymore. It's a shame. Because you have women with their nurturing spirit and and love for their babies who are no longer their babies anymore. A lot of them are just straight demons living in the house. Well, you'll excuse fornication and evil for the sake of thinking that one day you will be able to get to that child. I have all types of phone calls within the week where women are calling in and saying that, you know, they don't know what to do with their daughter who's now living in her house with another woman sleeping in the house. Or your son is gay and they got boys in their house. You don't know what to do. It's called restraining order. Okay, no, you you out of here. And it was, what was going on that you didn't see it? At what point you didn't see your baby changing? 
They got tats on them. You have girls running around trying to be boys. Listen, you put on a dress, you get up out of my house. Okay? If I have a girl, you're going to be a girl. If you're a boy, you're going you're gonna to become a man. Okay? It's easy to rid yourself of demons. Look at the law. Anyone going against that is on the outside of your door. Period. Read. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. These, these people who are turned to Satan will be used by the powers that be, the sorcerers that be to destroy and cause all types of, types of havoc in your home. You can just wait for one day for the wrong phone call or something to come knocking on your door, and you know what? It won't surprise you at all. You will know who it is. You, 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 you've been expecting something forever. You knew that this person was going the wrong way. You've seen the signs, yet ignored them. The signs of demonic possession. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. They found a way to get to our children right up under our nose, folks. Their aim is not us anymore. Their aim, their, 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 their aim are the children. The Bible says in the end times that, that women shall bring forth menstruous monsters. Children that are without affection. Why? The man is not around anymore. And the women are being run over roughshod by demons they had. That, that was turned through this system, through this Babylonian system. And it's hard for mothers to let go. I know it, but you must. It's hard for, for, for men to let go when you see your children going the wrong way. But, it's, but I'll tell you what, it's harder for women. It's way tougher on women. Women excuse the behavior of their children all the time. Their children can do no wrong. If you talk about their children, you're talking about them. No, nah, we're going to have to judge righteous judgment when it comes to these, these unrepentant brute beasts. That's what's going on in our communities. Amongst us. These people are, are demon possessed. Being controlled by the powers that be. And we're getting destroyed. Without hand, folks. Because no one is going to stand up for the Most High against the unrighteousness, not even in their own home. And that will filter beyond your door, and eventually the communities are, are war-torn. Come on. Uh, verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the Most High. We must take on ourselves the full armor of the Most High. We have to take a stand with him. We have to take a stand with him. Against evil, even if that evil is in our family, folks. Read. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Come on. And having done all to stand. Therefore, uh, excuse me, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. With truth. See? This is how you destroy the demon. If someone is in your house studily, just straight in your face lying to you. Like, you got to go. At least be truthful, because if you're truthful, at least I can do what? I can prepare for what's to come. I can help you prepare for what's to come. But if you're lying to me, how can I protect the home? How can I protect you? It's unfair for you to know that you're doing something that can harm someone and lie. 
You have people, you have parents who know their children are doing all types of foolishness. You can have a, a, a young boy smelling like he, he just ran through a, 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 a weed plant of smoke in his house saying, well, listen, and you ask, well, what's going on? Are you smoking? Well, you, why, are you at, why are you coming down on me? I'm not doing nothing. And it smelled like you just came from a Bob Marley concert. And the parents is looking at you and they'll straight lie in your face. <laughs> okay? And then the parents will be asking, I don't know what I'm going to do with this boy. I don't know what I'm going to do with this girl. You don't know what you're going to do. What? Hit the door. When I, see diso when I see disobedience rise up, I have an answer. Hit the door right now. And that's the power of man, folks. That's the power of man. It's a shame that we have houses with no men in it because a man will stand up and say, listen, a righteous man will stand up and say, it ain't going on up in here. And then the mother be like, no, just give him a chance. Listen, you want to coddle the demon? Okay, because that means the demon is no longer in that, in, in that little demon downstairs. Did he jump? Okay, <laughs> read on. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Come on. And having done all to stand. And having done all to stand, read. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness, which is God's law. So even if someone is struggling with something, Right? You have people that are struggling with sin. At least they understand if they're in your home. You know, they understand how far they can go in, in their actions. They understand that there's authority by God in the house and fear. And see, and that's the least we must have in our home. Where even if someone is struggling with something, they're thinking, they begin to think before acting. Come on. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking on the shield of faith, read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of of the wicked because sometimes the wicked if they know they're strong initially won't take you down all at once they'll use fiery darts little things here and little things there to break you down to the level in which they can now hit you with the kill shot that's how it works if you're strong in your faith, they'll wait for weak moments and they'll do other things they'll have some confusion going on over here with that one person you allow it in your house and through that, other things start going on because the demon have moved from one person to the next, into the dog, anything. And now you got all types of chaos going on and the demon is upstairs asleep. The person who brought in the demon is upstairs asleep. Those are fiery darts where Satan will look to break you down before you do what? You open yourself up for the kill shot, begin to lose faith, thinking there's no help in the earth, no help in the world, uh, nothing I can do. When the God, when, when the demon is upstairs, now you losing your faith doing what? Coddling a demon. Are you following me here? <laughs> All right. Real quick, let's. I got one more chapter. Ecclesiastes two and one, and then I'll, I'll, I'll I have some announcements, and then subsequent to that, I'll open it up. I'll I'll actually actually answer some questions today. Two and one. Ecclesiastes two and one. Let's read it. Ecclesiastes two and one. 
No, Proverbs 23 and 13 first. Proverbs 23 and 13. Yes. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 13. Come on. Withhold not correction. Withhold not correction. From the child. From the child. Withhold not correction from the child. Okay? Sisters, don't let your daughters walk around with leggings on. That's not cute. You're opening your child for molestation and all types of pain if you allow her to believe that she can walk around with leggings on. I'm going to tell you, this world is filled with sodomites and molesters more than you can fathom. Come on. For if thou hast beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. And it's speaking of the boy now. Correct that boy. It says, if you beateth him with a rod, the, bo the boy will not die. He'll live. Why do you think the system don't want you? You think they care about your child to the degree in which they don't want you chastising your child? They could care less. They, they be brain killing our boys with vaccines. Right. So they, they don't really care about whether or not you give your child a, a, a pain through whippings. They're trying to stop the correction so that they can allow the demons to control your child. That's why they don't want children uh, being chastised by their parents. They want uncontrolled demons in which they can... Those that they can control, the chaos. This is how they bring order, their order, through chaos. They know how to control it because why? They control the demons you allow to fester in your children. Through sorcery, witchcraft. It's a craft, folks. So they'll tell you, you shouldn't beat your child. That's wrong. That's abuse. No, they don't want your child corrected because only they can control that demon against you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Read verse 14. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. This is how you protect your children from hell, putting the fear of God in them. Come on. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Don't look at what everyone else is doing and say, well, I'm going to allow my child to do it so that it's not left out. Don't envy the sinner. Your child will be like, well, she, she put this on. Or the boy will say, well, he got that. He's doing that. Don't let them guilt trip you into losing them. Read. But be thou in the fear of the Most High all the day long. Come on, that's the answer. Read. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers. Be not among people who get drunk. Here's some clear safe spaces for us. <laughs> See, at the end of this, I say I'm going to make sure we're going to bring some stuff out according to the Bible that will make us safe. Right. Don't be among drunkards. I've never understood people hanging out at bars and places where there's all chaos and confusion. Demons running rampant. See. Mm. Come on. Be not among wine bibbers. Among rioters, eaters of flesh. Uh, 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 among rioters and eaters of flesh. Okay? This is on every level. This is also speaking about these fraternities, these secret societies, a lot of these gatherings they have, this wicked 
uh, chambering that's, that be going on amongst you so-called rich people. Read. Verse 21. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Come on. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee. Listen to your father who begat thee. Read. And despise not thy mother when she is old. And despise not thy mother when she is old. And we have a lot of that going on in our community, not honoring our father and mother. Mm. Regardless of the excuse. Because the Bible tell you... Uh, a, 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 a person that brings excuses, a wicked person will not be reproved, but have an excuse of why they're wicked and evil. You can't listen. Your mother and father brought you into the earth. Nothing is perfect, but you can't blame your parents forever. Grow up. Come on. Verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it. Not. That means don't give away the truth the Most High have given you for anything. Buy it. Make sure you get it. But keep it. Buy the truth. Get it. And never give it away. Read. Also wisdom. And, and I, I need to put this out there because I've seen someone uh, one time they put this precept out there while we were teaching and say, it says, buy the truth and sell not. And it was talking about when we talk about the academy that you have to purchase to get in. I'm like, the scripture is not talking about that because you bought something there. <laughs> you purchased something there. It's speaking of you're willing to do what you can to get it, but make sure you keep it. Don't sell it away to the point where you don't have anything and now you're back at square one. That's what that's talking about. Read. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. He that begetteth a wise child shall have joy in that child. A child that fears the most high. A child with morality. Read. Verse 25. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Come on. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. It says a whore is a deep ditch, and a woman is a what? And a strange woman is a narrow pit. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. This is the pit to hell, folks. You notice that they have apps and all that where you can meet a total stranger to be with. The scriptures is talking about this. Do you know what demons you're taking on by joining your flesh to an harlot? Doesn't matter how she's shaped or whatever the case is. What's in her is decrepit. It's decrepit. If you could see the demon in her, you would run for your life. Any woman that would put her body out there on Snapchat and publicly and just show her behind and all that, you're looking at a decrepit soul that leads to hell. Okay? Okay. The Bible teaches us straight run from that woman. A real woman would honor her body by covering it and then giving her body to a worthy man who will respect her and build a legacy with her. Okay? That's what it's about. To, to bring up a prodigy of the Most High. She'll understand to cover herself knowing its value, knowing that any man can't see her beauty. That's how wonderful and beauty, beautiful she is. That, that men cannot gaze upon her and desire anything. That's how precious she is. See? But if you're devalued, mm. 
If you devalue yourself by having it where anyone can look at you and like you, what good is it? It's already been given out. The most tolerate, Christ even says, if you look on a woman and lust after her, after her in their heart, you've already committed adultery. Now, you, you can't walk down the street unless every woman and her daughter is walking around showing every crevice of their body. It's on purpose, folks. It's so that everyone out there, any man, even a righteous man, would be by default breaking the law of Christ. <laughs> you understand? You can't even look on a person without seeing every part of that person. Read it again. Verse 27. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. She lieth, she, she lieth as one looking for a prey, folks. She lieth in wait as a predator. And at the end of it, what happens? The trans and increaseth the transgressors among men. And she increaseth sin amongst man. Hmm. And this is the simplicity of man chasing young women, folks, for the sake of pleasure. You are yielding your soul to what? A deviant. It's witchcraft. It's a trap. She's a witch. She's a witch. And I even examined that. Think about what a witch is. Look it up. Do the research. Witches changes their continents. They will change themselves into someone else to trap someone. And when they take off all the stuff that they put on themselves, you're looking at an entirely different person. Face off, mm. witchcraft. Hair off, witchcraft, folks. That's not the person you desired. You've been deceived. You've been tricked into a trap. Check that out. Witchcraft is on every level to the point where it's so rampant and normal that people can't even see. I remember growing up and you can you can look at a young lady and you'll know, OK, it's OK to one one day or the other day changes your style. But you that's not your hair. That's not your face. That's not how you look. I grew up with you. And it was at one time women honored who they were and respected who they were and didn't have to cover it. Didn't have to cover their natural beauty or the texture of their hair and how they looked. They respected their temple and their vessel. And if a man didn't respect them the way they looked, that man wasn't good enough for them. That's a real woman. Hmm. Read on. Verse 29. Who have woe, who have sorrow, who have contentions, who have babblings, who have wounds without cause, who have redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. And he's talking about people that seek to just party all the time. Where it's all about partying and drinking and all that, and there's no time or space for prayer or in reverencing and honoring the Most High God who made you, where the whole life become one big party from one party to the next. And you know what? That's a real element for the youth right now. Because by the time they get into their 30s, they realize they've lost, 30s and 40s, they've lost the prime of their life, wasting it on nothing. Read. Verse 30, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look 
not thou upon the wine when it is red. Come on. When it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Mm. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. It says, thou eyes shall do what? Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Our eyes shall behold strange women. Read. And thine heart shall utter perverse things. And our heart shall utter perverse things. And that's coming down to the men now. Let's talk about the men. Read it. Read that last piece again. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Brothers... You're going to begin to desire outside of the same mother who made you in disrespect and dishonor of your mother. You'll begin to honor strange women and respect strange women and leave our sisters out here with no prince, no one to guide them. What's wrong with our sisters that when, once you get anything, you want to leave them and desire something that don't even relate to you or understand you? That's evil. You owe it to your sisters to continue your prodigy. Okay. And they are sisters that, that are open to be cultivated and nurtured in righteousness and virtue. You can't get something and say, well, now I got something. Let me go find a strange woman outside of the mother who made me. That's wicked. That's evil. It ain't, it's not right. I don't, I don't know how some of the greatest women on earth could be the less desired. And it, and it ends up that way as some, as some form of normality. It's wrong. Okay. That's what my father made sure he told me. He's like, listen, son, I know you're going through something right now. Dealing with the music, you're singing, you're doing that. Okay, you're growing up in your own. He says, you better bring me a child that looked like me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that straight up. And my, my father wasn't racist. He was just pro his people. And that's another fallacy out there. It, just because you're you for your people doesn't mean you're against someone else. Mm -hmm. How do we keep our tradition alive if we keep watering it down, homogenizing it? We owed it to our ancestors. Christ was blacker than me. And I owe it to him to make sure I bring a child that's looking like that. Nothing against Chinese people or white people. I'm for my people. That's what it's about. And you brothers should take more pride in that. Okay. Let's go. Verse 33. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Come on. And thine heart shall utter perverse things. And thy heart shall utter perverse things. Instead of speaking with the wisdom of the Most High, the majority of conversations are just so ridiculous and stupid now. It's like we, you look, you, I'm looking at grown people with gray beards talking childish stupidity I've, I heard, you know, in middle school. <laughs> You know, stupidity with, without wisdom. Come on. Verse 34. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. The whole thing is our people have been beat, war torn and all of that. And having considered that the most high 
is trying to tell us something. <laughs> you, let me tell you, any other nation would have been ran back to their God after this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Any other nation would have went back. Let me tell you, if, if just, just say Chinese people, hypothetically, left Buddha, and because of that, they're now being initiated into every black temple on earth where they got to learn under black people and be oppressed by black people while we build everything. And then, and then the Chinese people in the Chinese communities, they got to go to all black stores because there's no products or anything they can get outside of our stores. But then the Chinese people are told that if they come back to Buddha, they'll have everything. What do you think would happen? You, you don't see how asinine and crazy this looks? I'm talking about from an outside perspective. Or that you, you wouldn't find one Chinese Christian on earth if they found out that they could rule everything by going back to Buddha. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Safe space. Let's end it. I hope today you've learned enough of how to identify the, the, the wickedness which resides in our homes and begin to rid ourselves, yourselves of it. Let's go straight to Ecclesiastes. Let's end it here. There's a lot I would like to talk about, but... Of course, good things, all good things must come to an end today on this Sabbath. It's been a, a powerful three hours, but you know what? I'm still going to answer a few questions and talk even beyond that. The Spirit is rolling today in the Spirit, and hopefully the Most High have allowed us to, to receive some food, some spiritual food that would help clean our house starting at the end of this Sabbath. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus, which is Sirach, uh, the third chapter. Now y'all know the origin of, origin of demons, how the government used them through invocation, how demons have really no power over us unless we sin and let them in. That's why the Lord gave us the law. Now we know that if, if people in your house do have demons, They'll become an enemy of those who will serve in righteousness in Christ and cause trouble all up in your house. We know that now. And we know, you know what to do now if that person don't want to shed that de demon and repent. Okay? It's called the boot. Okay? Either you're going to be down with what you let in or you're going to be down with the family who brought you in. Which one? I bought you up in this place. So you're not going to go out and get some demon to wreck shop up in here. Right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes now in 3 and 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. The Most High is saying... Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that you may be safe. Come on. Verse 2. For the Most High have given the father honor over the children. He have given the father honor over the children. You notice when children uh, uh, become anything in this world, even if the father's in the house, that he's rarely mentioned. You notice, and not that the mother shouldn't get recognition, but men gets no recognition in this evil and wicked world. You notice that? I need you to think about that for a moment. Why? Because man was made in the image of God. Satan hates God. 
Every time he see a strong man, he's looking at the presence of the power that rejected and kicked his behind out of the heavenly realm. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, read, and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. And have confirmed the authority over the authority of the mother over the son. So there's an equal respect when it comes to the power. The Most High doesn't disrespect the woman's authority. But the man is over the woman. And it's, it's upon us to, to, to it, let me tell you, it's upon us to, to fight for that authority that was entrusted us uh, through the Most High. They're trying to make being a man criminal. They're trying to make being a man criminal, folks. And the only example they're showing now of any so-called, what you would call male, because you can't even call them men, are feminized males. To be a man is criminal. Oh, that's threatening. Just to be a man, you know, that, that's threatening. Toxic masculinity. They, yeah, they call it toxic masculinity. No, I'm a man. And that's what I'm going to be. You're not going to change that. I'm going to think like a man. I'm going to talk like a man. And I'm not going to change who I am for the sake of your space. Me being a man shouldn't offend you. Okay? Read. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins. If a child honor their father, they make an atonement for their sins. You notice how this system teaches the children to talk down against their father or speak publicly about a man hmm. in a negative light? Not realizing, folks, you cut off your father or speak against your father, you're also speaking against your ancestors. The lineage, your tradition, comes through the loins of men. And it doesn't, yeah, a lot of people may be going through certain things and saying, well, my father wasn't this or he wasn't around or whatever that. But honor the fact that you were made. And, it, and if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't exist. At least give him that. Hmm. And honor that peace until the Most High bring resolve. But don't denigrate and disrespect him. Read. Verse 4, and he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure. Come on. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. If you dishonor your father, regardless of what you think, the Most High isn't hearing your prayer, because if you're going to disrespect your father on earth, you'll definitely disrespect your father in heaven. You Okay. The Most High sent him hmm. to bring you forth, regardless of what you think. He sent that man to bring you forth. As you are, so is he. Let's break the spells over us by doing the contrary of this system. OK, not becoming over emotional and all that and, and going through, oh, this is what I'm going through. And he wasn't there. And listen, grow up. Fight against the system. By honoring those who you even felt. Uh, 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 did things against you or wasn't there for you. If not, if not honor them. Don't dishonor them. Okay, read. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient unto the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. Come on. He that feareth the Most High will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Mm. 
Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed. Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed. Now I can point to things that's, that I know that wasn't satisfactory when it came to my mother and father, but you'll never know that. Okay. You'll never know that. I'll only speak of the glowingly loving things. Okay. In public. And you know what? Anything that I didn't think was absolutely right with them, I've already forgave them for. Because when I got of age, I was able to speak to them. Even if I, and guess what? If I didn't have the opportunity to speak to them, I would have still forgiven them. Okay. Some things we can keep within family. And guess what, brothers and sisters? Believe it or not, it's therapeutic to let negative go. It's therapeutic. Don't let our old sins and, our, and the things that happened to us in the past weigh us down and dictate our, our path. Think about it. Everyone is running around angry. Angry at your parents, angry at this person. That's a demon. You can be controlled now. You're being controlled. Mm -hmm. Satan controls the over-emotional. Unstable. See? Read on. Honor thy father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. Come on. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of the children. The, the blessings of the father establishes the houses of the children. Now, I know there's a problem now because we're dealing in where majority of ho households uh, are raised. Children are being raised without men in the house. Women have to change that. It's got to it have to go back to what it was. Okay. You are not to have a child with a man who's not willing to marry you. Period. First. Period. Easy fix. Okay. And you're definitely not supposed to repeat the pattern after having a child with a man. Okay. And finding another guy to do the same thing. So now you got that young man looking for some some level of, 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 of a mentor. And all types of chaos come in. Or oh, you want to find a guy who you think is halfway decent as a mentor. Come to find out you done brought a demon up in your house. And, and then is, then we, we see a perpetual cycle of, of destruction in our families. Right? Read. But the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, for thy father's dishonor is no... It says, for the blessing of the father established the house of his children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. And when it says the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations, you have to realize, folks, that there was a curse in the beginning that led to a lot. It came through disobedience and battling. That led to warfare and everything we see in the earth today. Because why? Man and woman wasn't seeing eye to eye due to that disobedience. And it started destruction. With the man and woman not being one on one accord. With Eve being deceived. Having something or an entity or someone to come in and disturb that union. Read. Verse 10. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father. For thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. And it says, for the glory of a man from the honor of his father and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to her children. So women have to understand how she's being viewed 
as a nurturer and as a mother in the house. Because it seems as, it seems as and I know it seems unfair, that a woman had to be extra virtuous. And it seemed as if more is put upon her to stay clean and look certain ways opposed to what's put on men. And I know it's tough, but the most high made it that way that a woman have to, because she's the nurturer of a child before the child gets to the degree in, uh, in which it grows up. And now it's time for the man to kick in. Hope y'all understand this. So it's hard for a young man to know what type of woman to find if he don't first see that virtue during his nurturing years. Okay? Hope y'all understand that. So it's upon the woman to be almost extra virtuous because that young man, everyone is dependent on her as this squeaky clean example in the home. So if a young man is seeing a woman and different guys are coming in and out of her house and all those things, and a young man grew up to think that's normal. See, it throws everything out of balance. He don't know what a virtuous woman is. He can't look at his mother for that example and desire to love that woman. Okay. Come on. Verse 12. My son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. Help thy father in thine age and grieve your father not as long as he liveth. And I have to state this and put this out there as, as, as a point of emphasis when it comes to a safe space. Why? You rarely hear in the earth anymore, anywhere, that men or fathers should be honored. It's a, listen, we've been inundated with honoring the woman to the degree in which we don't have to explain or even talk about it. But someone has to bring the balance and put, put it back in order. Because it's going to be hard to kick these demons out of our home if there's no men of the most high in the home. See? Come on. Verse 13. And if his and if his understanding fail, have patience with him. That means if your father begin to lose some of his wit intact through age, because that happens through time, be patient with your father, read and despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. What verse you at? Verse 14. Go ahead. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. Come on. In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. Thy sins also, also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. So as you can see, if you treat your father right and look upon your father righteously, the most high will find favor in that. Okay. And he says here, thy sins also shall melt away. The most high will actually do away with your sins. Okay, when I say do away with your sins, he won't utterly judge you for all the wrong you've done based on your honor. We all have reasons if we would like to look at anything that's been done with us to be angry about something. Everyone. But, it t it's, but Christ tell us in the Lord's Prayer, we're asking the Most High to forgive our debts and trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. See, how can we forgive people in the street and others and can't even forgive our own families, our own father and mother for, for not such a, a perfect upbringing or, or past? That's wrong. 
Read verse 16. He that forsaketh his father is as a blasphemer. If you forsake your father, according to the Most High, you are as a blasphemer. Read. And he that angereth his mother is cursed of the Most High. And you have an unruly demon running around and, and, and causing their mother's grief. You do what? Is as cursed of the Most High. You're cursed of the Most High God. So you see what's going on in our neighborhoods where our youth are be killing each other and dying off and dying and, 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 you know, in number right now? We're looking at it right here. The children are disobedient and have went away and don't even want to serve the living God. So the most high, I'm going to tell you, honor thy mother and mother or father or your days shall be short on the land. The Most High spoke that. So now we got these disobedient children, liars, disrespecting, running around, sodomitish behavior, and the Most High is allowing the death angel to reign in our communities. And no one is pointing to the fact that the disobedience has led to all of this, that the God of Israel is speaking while no one's listening. I can see it clearly. Read verse 17. My son, go on with thy business in meekness, so shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. And thou shalt find favor with the Most High God. Let's put things back in order. Look inwardly and rid ourselves of the past demons. We reflect on that makes us angry and upset and, reg and regretful. These are all inordinate emotions that Satan, Satan can easily control. That's right. Rid your home of the demons. That concludes the lesson we have today. Wickedness resides in our home, the hard truth. And hopefully you brothers and sisters have gotten some understanding to actually use some of the scriptures and, and, the, and, and the precepts concerning the origin of, of evil to rid the spiritual clutter within your own homes and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That concludes the lesson. So, I'm going to answer a few questions in a moment, but before I do that, I would like to also, again, announce the fact that we are in week three of our Hebrew and Bible Academy. We invite you all in tomorrow. It will be an action or a spiritually action packed uh, 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 lesson tomorrow as far as going into Abraham, even his birth. We're going to show you what happened at Abraham's birth. It's going to blow a lot of you away. Um, the promises of our father, Abraham, tomorrow. OK, and how that promise stands today and us poor people that's living in these ghettos and are being destroyed by the demons throughout the four corners of the earth. We being the children of Abraham will one day inherit the promises. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow also. OK, um, if you would like to become a part of our Hebrew and Bible Academy, it's only week three. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure you get the, the two prior lessons, okay? And, uh, hey, it's only $50 a month, folks. In it, you get your full welcome packet. You get your, you get your, your, um, your PDFs sent to you. You get full direction on how to get in. 8 a.m. in the morning is when we begin to set things up. And when you come in 9 o'clock, you have Elder Lawyer. Hebrew 101, breaking down the Hebrew like you wouldn't believe. And then, uh, of course, Shapat. I have no idea what Shapat is looking into, but he, he does a great job finding news and articles, thought-provoking information to discuss. Him and I deal with the news segment. Then after that, sub subsequent to that, I'll be teaching the lesson. It's only $50 a month, and guess what? It's more information in one of our Hebrew and Bible lessons than you will actually get. 
in all the days that you have actually been in any church, mosque, or anything. I guarantee you, you'll learn more in one of our lessons than you have throughout all of your life in any religion. Even if you are a Hebrew Israelite that have learned in some, some group somewhere, come in one of our lessons and be a part of our academy and you tell us whether or not, okay, whether or not these lessons that the Most High bestowed on the church is not of the Most High. You'll learn more in one lesson than you have in any of those Hebrew groups. Guaranteed. Okay? And like I said, it's only $50 a month, and the money actually helped further the ministry so that we can get, we have to go to Africa, we have to set things up, we have to go into other remote areas, we have to set up churches, and all these things, unfortunately, cost. Okay, and without your help, we, we can't open up new buildings and new churches, okay? Also, as I as before, I mentioned, uh, we do take in tithes and donations. So if you, have, if you want to tithe or donate to myself and the elders who, who are teaching, okay, you can actually send to our email, okay? Matter of fact, you can send to our P.O. Box, 2000 Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19130, title it, or you can su subjugate uh, the Gathering of Christ Church, P.O. Box 946, Hamilton Street, Philadelphia, PA 19130. Okay, or you can donate by going to historytimes.org, gatheringofchrist.org, or send an email to gathering as one at AOL.com. All right. All right. Let's open it for questions. We can answer just a few. Then wish you all Godspeed. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. Any questions? A question right here, Cynthia. What's that? In reference to uh, Ecclesiasticus 32 and 17, is it not through prayers that we believe that their change will come? Is that why mothers sort of give in with heartful pity for their child? There is power through prayer. But like I was mentioning to uh, a sister the other day, prayer can only work to the, the degree of the person you're actually praying for. When I say that, you can have a person who would like to sin and do evil and wickedness. Just say if someone is a killer and want to continue killing people. Mm. You can pray that the Most High help this person and, and, and stop them from doing that. But all in all, if this person have in, in their heart, in their heart is content and, 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 and intending on killing someone, what good will the prayer do? That person must want to change or repent. Okay, so yes, there is power in prayer. Okay, there is power in that. And that's why the Most High, to some degree, due to the prayer, haven't altogether done away with us yet. But all in all, like I told the sister the other day, and I asked the sister when she called, do your son want what you're praying for? Uh, next one. Oh, that went pretty quick. What's next? Where did it go? I'll answer one or two more questions, and after that, I can wish you all Godspeed because we did cover a lot within three hours. There was a next one, but there's so many. Here's okay. A, here's another question. Please clarify, Elder. Are the East Indians? Uh, Hamites or the Persians? Well, to clarify, when, right after the flood, Hamites, okay, ba Babylonians, Cushites went into both areas, okay, S some in Persia and some in East India, okay? So absolutely, yes. I'm not speaking of all the East Indians, but the majority of East Indians you see today right, in our communities are Hamites. 
They, they are carrying the original Babylonian religion, and that's why they are allowed over here uh, to make commerce so that they can join with the Catholics and others to pray against us in these communities. Okay? Not to say exclusively because there's a large number of Israelites who are in India right now. Okay? There's a large number of Elamites from the children of Elam who's in, in India. But the ones that we see coming over here are Hamites. <laughs> okay? And in parts of Persia. All right, what's next? I think this one just went there. Question. If you have tattoos but are now walking in the truth, will you still be judged or do you need to get rid of it and how? That, that's a good question. The Bible tells us in times past, the Most High winked at our ignorance, but now command everyone everywhere to repent. Okay? Now, no one can be judged on past sins. What can you do? If someone has a tattoo, it's upon them. You can Google it or whatever the case is and find a way to get the tattoo removed. Sometimes people can use laser. There's different type of technology that can laser it off or whatever the case is. But it's best to rid yourself of that brand. That brand is connected to a demon. But no, you cannot be judged on anything you've done in the past. Once you're baptized, the most high placed, as far as the heavens is concerned, a new clothing over you, a white robe. So the Most High doesn't see that old vessel that have repented and put off former, former sins. But all in all, for yourself, you probably want to find a way to get the tattoo off, okay? And you understand? Uh, but there's ways. You can probably Google it. I, don't, I haven't looked into it. But I'm just saying there's a clear indicator for those who may meet a person or whatever the case is, and you can see certain things on them to know, okay, a demon was there or is there. And tattoos is a key indicator. Okay. Someone asked, what if you're totally covered? Hey. I would no sense in trying to get those removed. Do what's right. Follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. And we eventually, we're going to shed these anyway, right? <laughs> okay. With that, we're going to say, Shalom, you stay strong. We'll continue our lesson next week. Thank you for your uh, participation in our, our Sabbath class. And, of course, we'll be, we'll be back this Wednesday with another important GOCC Gathering of Christ Church broadcast. With that, we're going to say shalom. Stay strong, stay strong in the spirit and sin not. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth, on earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. I would like to say shalom to all our brothers and sisters. Stay strong. We'll soon see Zion. Okay. I'm Elder Ricardo, along with your pot. And for you in the academy, <laughs> oh, guess what? We're going to drop a bomb on y'all tomorrow. Shalom. <laughs> Praise the Most High.